Hey, we're live. Hi, how's it going, everybody? I am Danny, and uh, I am here to run this Dungeons and Dragons game for our uh, for our cast here. Um, this is set in the world of my creation, uh, and it is going with a graphic series that is coming out soon uh, that I'm really excited about. Um, and we are going to try and get into it as fast as we can. The first thing I want to do is introduce our cast. And we're going to start with Roland uh, right over there. Yep. Uh, tell us who you are, a little bit about yourself, and about your character. What's up, guys? I'm Roland. Um, right now, I am just a regular dude, but normally I'm a bartender. Um, <laughs> I've been playing D&D uh, &D since I was a kid. Actually, one of my first games was with Danny. Um, that was like, a millennia ago so um um i don't know uh, he asked me to jump on this thing i have no actual like professional acting background or anything like that but um i hope i can be entertaining for y'all because i'm generally kind of a goof so <laughs> as you can tell right now <laughs> um my character is aegis ing um you'll all learn about him as we go through this but um you know i'm i'm psyched hope this is fun i'm sure that'll be all fun all right Indeed, indeed. All right, so uh, next uh, next we have Sarah. We all know Sarah, but tell us anyway. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm Sarah. I'm the CEO of Rem Alternus. So really happy to host this show and the upcoming Kickstarter for Cottlesworth's Clockwork Circus, which also takes place in this world, and it's amazing. Um, and I'm going to be playing Shay Loon, and uh, she is a gnome wizard. And magic is new in this world, so I get to kind of create these spells myself and uh, kind of define a little bit of what they do. So I'm real excited about that. Excellent. Uh, sitting next to Sarah is John. Uh, tell us about yourself and who you're playing. Hi, um, I'm John. I'm a playwright. Um, I love fantasy worlds um i've been in and out of dungeons and dragons and shadow run for years now i'm still not good at math but we're going to overcome that together um i'm playing a delightful genderqueer gnome rogue named panabon and we're going to have fun with hijinks is what's going to happen um and i'm going to try not to spoil them so hello everyone all right um we're going to go then straight directly down to alex hello hey guys um for those who don't know me i'm alex gasky um in my day job i'm a data scientist but uh, a lot of you guys know i like to game i like to do a lot of improv and things like that and so this is going to be all of the above and i'm super excited to be playing a dragonborn fighter so i'm purple with spikes <laughs> <laughs> purple uh and uh sitting next to alex there we have leah uh take it away hi everyone my name is leah in my real life not fantasy i am a model and in this world i am an elven warlock and i have escaped from my native land and i'm trying to figure out what's going on beyond the tempest so this is my first time playing D, &D and i'm really excited to be playing with all of you all so welcome to our Welcome to our Mystic World. And finally, we have Randy, last but not least. Hey, everybody. My name is uh, Randy Alvarenga. I am living out in the Pacific Northwest, new to being here, but originally from Washington, D.C. And I am super excited because being an actor and loving gaming like I have most of my life, like this is just really cool and exciting. And these people are all amazing. So I hope that you have as much fun as I do. Um, I'm playing a character named Lachlan Dossett. And he is a gunslinger slash with a little twist that I'll let you learn while we play. Indeed, indeed. All right. And that's the cast. Once again, I am Danny. I will be taking care of them as they travel through the lands. And before we get uh, any further, if... Um, if Sarah could uh, let us know if there's any announcements or anything that she needs to share for Rem. Uh, just tune in. Uh, thank you guys for, for being here. We've got a great turnout so far for our premiere. We've got 36 viewers right now, which is amazing. 
Um, I think uh, if we get one more, that's like the biggest we've ever had for anything other than my wedding. Um, so don't forget to follow <laughs> us so that you know when we go live. We have a bunch of shows. We have Dresden Files on Mondays. We have uh, Shadowrun Tuesdays. We have a brand new series coming next month that's uh, an all LGBTQ plus cast for D&D. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, Friday is game nights or L5R. Those uh, alternate, and L5R is coming back this week. Um, Saturday is D&D Episodicals 2 um, with our mostly POC cast, which is amazing. And uh, yeah, just really excited. Our next big thing is on, because Danny won't talk about it because he gets shy about the things that he's involved in, uh, is uh, uh, for those that don't know what this is. Um, so Kaalifis is this world uh, and Danny has created it in a graphic novel, um, a graphic series. And so Ram Alternus is co-producing that. And so the Kickstarter for the graphic series, the first issue of the graphic series, goes live on February 2nd. And uh, it's amazing. We've been working really hard on the Kickstarter. There's a lot of great content. And to help support that, and also because more story and more fun, and we're all gamers anyway, like clockwork takes place in that world as well. So you get another story happening in that world and it's just amazing. So I'm really excited that we get to help build this world and act and role play and um, God, just play together in this new sandbox that no one else has gotten to play in ever before. So really excited for this. I'm super stoked. All right, so um, with that, we're going to get our game faces on and rejoin you in just a moment. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Quite a time out on the sea, um, traveling traveling across the oceans from from country to country, continent to continent. Um, the the end is in sight. Um, Aegis and Lox can both see the coastline. Um, they can see the outline of the buildings. They can see uh, the greenery behind that leads into the mountain range. Um, they are heading into the port city of Merkuldashta, and this is on the eastern coast of Vaishan. Uh, Vaishan is a desert kingdom, and this is protected by mountains and is probably the only green spot in the land. Um, as they approach, they can see other boats docking. Um, they can see the the sand colored stone that make up all of the buildings, um, and and smoke rises. Uh, from various furnaces and locations within the city. Um, it's been a bit of a journey. Um, go ahead and, uh, Roland, uh, describe Aegis for us. Um, at the front of the boat, staring into the, uh, at the shore, um, with a very serious face, is a very tall, um, I guess, um, a very tall, like Asian man. Um, he's got a high uh, top knot that has a, a golden band on it. Um, he's wearing armor, but it's it's covered by like these flowy kind of um, uh, black and blue robes. Um, he's leaning a bit forward because on his back he has this oversized haversack with a with a, a bedroll on it, and attached to that is a big old tower shield just uh, hanging off the back of it. 
Um, he's a little bit lanky, a little bit he's tall and lanky. So at first, at first sight, you're kind of like, how is he managing all that weight on his back? But he doesn't seem to be very labored by it. Um, he just kind of uh, looks off, off into the distance, kind of grumpily, and he says to the man next to him, he says, if I have to eat one more dry piece of bread, I am going to find the first person, and I'm going to stab them with a blunt instrument. Hold, hold, hold up now. <laughs> so so Lox is the guy standing next to him, and Lox is um, about 5'10", uh, tan, brown-colored skin, uh, dreadlocks, wearing a cowboy hat, and sort of a poncho that hides some of his, like, steampunk accessories that he has on. But, um... He he stares at his friend and he says, I just can't wait to get my feet back on solid ground. I've had enough of these ships to last a lifetime. Quite enjoyed the ride, but the food is lacking. I swear. And I kind of walk off and start pacing like a little bit next to you. He's in his moods again. Well, hey. Look, it'll be a few moments. We'll get in town. We'll find some good eating, uh, and we'll go from there. But I, I know we we came here following some of those rumors we heard on the way. We're, we're just trying to figure out what's what's going on with. They said the tempest has disappeared. I, that's crazy. I don't believe that. <laughs> I I I have a feeling. My lady has spoken to me in my dreams, and I have a feeling that it is true. Mm. Yeah. There are things emerging from all of these events, but I'm having a hard time thinking about that with an empty stomach. All right, all right, got it. I'll find us some. The boat continues on, and within the next hour, the two of them are disembarking. Uh, indeed stepping onto dry land for the first time in weeks at this point. The dock is bustling. It's full of people uh, that are just busy loading and unloading crates from the various ships that have docked here. Uh, there are a few market stalls where individuals have kind of set up to kind of catch people coming off the boat uh, and and maybe entice them with some street vendor food, uh, various fairs. Um, of course here, uh, it, it is a, a sun-soaked land and a lot of the people that are around are, are very are darkened by the sun. Um, dock workers uh, take turns kind of just like moving out into the sun, working and then taking a, a rest. Uh, most of them are, are acclimated, but it's still hot enough that uh, that just going and going and going will eventually uh, exhaust folks. As they step off the boat, uh, neither of them have been to Merikodashita. Um, it's, it's definitely a foreign land and they aren't quite certain perhaps where to go. Gentlemen. Uh... You see me like fidgeting my collar. I'm wearing heavy armor and I'm wearing cloth over that. So um, kind of wipe my brow. I smell smoke. Some type of wood burning. Mm, and meat. That is definitely poultry. This way. And I beeline for whatever, <laughs> wherever that smell is coming from. Um, all right. So yeah. Uh, kind of making your way that in that direction, you do come across one of these street vendor stalls, and mm, not sure. Uh, it smells good. It smells great. It's, it's, you know, you could give it a shot, um, but it. I don't like the, the look of what's on that stick. <laughs> kind of look at it. Give me two. Uh, oh, oh, yes. Uh, he kind of, the, the, the gentleman kind of turns to the side, um, stabs a few skewers into the various um, 
the various items and and turns and as he as he kind of slides them over he says to you um that is uh oh one one nyak so i'm gonna reach in i'm gonna reach into my to my pouch and i'm gonna pull out whatever money i have <laughs> And I'm going to give it to him. <laughs> so, uh, in this world, Denong is uh, sort of an uh, sort of our our stand-in for like just kind of the Asian nations, uh, Southeast Asia and um, Eastern Asia, and they're kind of the economic center of the world. And so, they're the first ones to have printed currency. So, all the printed currency, so the trade that's accepted throughout the world, is the printed currency of Denong. Uh, which is the uh, Mook for gold, Nyak for copper, and uh, Peking for silver. Um, and of course, you've got a little, you've got a wallet with several of those builds. Um, most countries also have their own version of, you know, gold pieces, copper pieces, etc. Um, yeah, so there they are. They smell delicious. I take the first stick and I stare at it. Um... Like a husband who's staring at his wife, <laughs> just longingly, and smile. And I take that first bite. What do I taste? <laughs> so it's a combination of like uh, curries, various curries and um, and peppers. It's not necessarily a blend. Like you can think of ways to tweak this blend. Um, and just really improve on this, uh, but it's not horrible. Pause with a little bit of a chew. And I woof the rest of it down. <laughs> uh, I, I think I'll take one. Uh, and yes. he, he, he gives the store clerk some money, just puts it, and just starts chewing at it, not really trying to taste it and savor it, but just trying to fill his belly. And I turn to you, what? and for the first time, you see me smile. Ah, oh, this is wonderful. Finally, some real meat. Oh, my goodness. And I shove more meat into my mouth. Uh, as as Aegis is eating, um, Lux can't help but notice uh, wings and a just kind of a caca and just looking up there is a a black bird kind of that flies and lands on top of a building on the corner uh sort of leading out of this dock area and deeper into the deeper into the city i stop chewing immediately tap tap Aegis and go it's happening again Aegis, i just i just saw it it's here the bird. Yes. Give Let's me go. four more. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Uh, two Nyak. Um, Hand on the money, and I'll turn around and follow you. All right. So uh, they leave the dockside uh, and head deeper into the city. Um, meanwhile, Merkodashta has three markets. There is the eastern market. Uh, on the north side, there is the southern market, which is, uh, and then there's the northwest market. In the eastern market, we have two diminutive individuals who have been kind of just looking around, seeing what they can see, uh, maybe if there's something worth purchasing. But mostly, it's just to just out of boredom. They've, there's not a lot going on. Uh, they have their reasons for being here, and it's just trying to get out into the world and, and see the city a little bit uh, after being here for about a week. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and have uh, Sarah or John describe your character. After you, Panabon. Well, thank you. Um, the Panabon can be hard to miss in a crowd if Panabon wants to be noticed. Um, I have... I have midday daffodil colored skin. Some people call it yellow, but it's more than just yellow. Uh, my eyebrows are jeweled. Um, they're beautiful and provocative. And I am a st 
statuesque, three foot, three inches tall. Um, rather light on my feet, and I'm delightful company. And I really wish this town had a more vibrant uh, community of people busking because it's just, it's okay, but it could be, it could be improved. The quality of entertainment that the market goers deserved could be vastly improved. <laughs> All right. And uh, Shay, Shaylun, is uh, a young gnome. Um, she's was in university um and she is kind of distractible she she always has her um a book out and is reading as she's walking uh and not really paying attention to her surroundings although she's lately with her new traveling companion uh pays slightly more attention to keep himself or keep themselves and uh therefore her out of trouble and uh so she's kind of moving around, um, and she's got actually uh, fairly recently dyed um, uh, silver hair that fades into a purple, uh, but she always just pulls it back. She doesn't really actually care much about appearances. She's got too much to work on, too much to read, too much to learn, and she's also got a little ball uh, with her that's a little um, device, and it moves on its own. Um, it's actually inhabited by her familiar, who she calls Minya. So that's that's Shay. All right. It's um, a bustling day in the marketplace. Uh, lots of color here. Um, the 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 sand colored stone of the buildings. Uh, it's it's almost like to make up for it. Uh, the people here just go wild on the dyes uh, for their various clothing and and. Uh, and kind of designs and uh, decorations. And so the marketplace is a riot of color, um, a lot of people moving through. Um, it's uh, it's very busy. Busy enough to maybe find a couple of slippery wallets? Perhaps it is busy enough to find a couple of slippery wallets. Oh, those poor slippery wallets, you wouldn't just want to leave them unattended. Uh, uh, no. You know, because yeah, because eating is a is a really nice thing, um, and you know sometimes people's wallets just seem to fall out of places. It's it's very strange, and you know I've I've got quick hands, um, you know, so it might be it might be time to procure procure a wallet. I think would be would be would be a fun little outdoor activity for me. <laughs> All right. And so, yeah, there's there's plenty of people moving around. A lot of the the, the folks, they, the clothes they wear here, it, it's really flowy and, and sort of uh, loose, so that you know they can get air circulation in and through. And in a lot of cases, it's a little bit. It's been harder than you're used to in Palakun, um to to kind of get at people's wallets. But it, you know, a challenge is. Uh, is something that that Panabon welcomes, I'm sure. Yeah. And uh, so. the added challenge of traveling with Shay is that if she catches him, she dissuades him from <laughs> from anything. Like if she kind of doesn't say anything if it's already been done and she doesn't know who it goes to or whatever, because they do need to survive. And she's, but she's conflicted about that. But if she sees it, she can't. Indeed. Panabon. And so with that, Panabon, describe the scene. Ooh. Well, I love a good marketplace. That was one thing I loved about Palacune was just the vibrancy of the market. And, you know, challenge is, is a wonderful thing to have in life. You know, I don't have I don't have quick hands for nothing. Um, and so it's just one of those things where there's there's a couple of stalls that I've noticed that people seem to gravitate toward. I, I wouldn't say I'm casing the stalls in any way, shape, or form, of course, because um, I would never I would never do such a thing. Uh, but, you know, there's a couple of stalls where people like to congregate, and when people congregate, sometimes they don't pay as much attention. So, you know, if I, if I bump and my hand happens to go where there's a wallet, you know, when there happens to be some wonderful currency in that wallet that can be traded for bread and and food and things to you know tinker with 
I'm I'm more than happy to help stimulate the economy in such a way. Um, All right. Yeah. Let's get a sleight of hand check from you. Uh, and while this is happening, uh, let's get a perception test from Shay. Who are first dice rolls of the game? <laughs> what a hand! Let's see if I remember how to do this. All right. It's just this. And so, there just happens to have been one of those wallets that uh was in need of a home uh you're pretty sure just just an errant wallet um you don't even know who it really belongs to uh but but there it is and you you, panabon will panabon will take care of it uh and make sure that it it gets everything it needs as a as a young erstwhile wallet on the run I'm I'm a very kind person and you know wallets are made out of wonderful material too so if you have to like darn some socks or something like that there's just so much you can do with the wallet it's it's really important to honor the life of the wallet yes wallet socks <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, all right as, um go ahead as this is happening uh Shay is like writing down her thoughts on on some of her most recent uh, tests for um, for spells and her notes and follow up and questions, and uh, then she remem- she kind of looks around and remembers that they're in a marketplace and uh, um, goes, um, "Panabon, if you see uh, any um, any stalls for um, artifacts, gadgets, uh, magical tomes, anything that might have theory or or be." look like it might not be quite mundane. Uh, can you let me know? I will do my best, but I make no promises. Um, yeah, it's it's quite quite bustling. So, you know, it's... Yeah, I'm definitely definitely keeping an eye out. I, I really like that you're doing the thing that you're doing, that, um, yeah, I'm a big fan of the writing that, you, that, you're, that you're doing and the, and the learning. Big fan. Good times. Good times. Yeah, that doesn't again. that that doesn't uh, that doesn't not raise any flags for for Shay. <laughs> yeah. um, you, you're doing that thing where you're weird and therefore suspicious. Um, so whatever you're doing, stop it. Don't I don't. Mean... Keep in mind, we are trying to be low profile. Nobody. Nobody knows we're here, so and we wanted to keep it that way. I guess I, I'm being very low profile. I I would not want to be followed by anything that would that would be. You know, it's just one of those things where I like I like food, so I'm thinking with my thinking with my stomach right now. Currently, um, I know. And, I'm hungry yeah. too. Um, and I, I do want to get letters back home. Uh, I'm I'm hoping in this district we find a, a post um, somewhere we can send something to at least let the professor know, my family know that at least we're we're okay. We're well. I I, yeah, I I'm still not incredibly sold on telling people where we are. Um, just just out of genuine desire to preserve my own life uh well, but you are your own person and i will not stop you and arturus doesn't know that necessarily that w- that that what he tried didn't work so i'm alive and and it's not like my parents are gonna rat me out so if they, they just need to know i just disappeared so so I just want to make sure that they they know I'm safe and the professor. I want to make sure she's safe. We never know knew what happened if if Minya found her or not to give her the message. So I I just want to be safe. I want to I want them to know we're safe. Um, and I'd like you to stop being so well doing like the me. things you do. Yeah. <laughs> well. You know, it's life. Life has a funny way of making making things happen. Um, it it could always happen. Um, but oh, look! There's a there's a stall over there. It has I I don't know what those are, but maybe we should go over over to that stall and away from the one that we're 
currently at. We should we should we should head a little to the left, just a little bit to the left. I I kind of look at at the stall and um roll my eyes and uh and and move across the uh the the way and I'm I'm looking for for spices, spells, um spell books, um trinkets, gadgets, anything that I think might give me an idea uh to to go in and 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 help my studies. So that's that's the stuff I'm looking for while trying not to notice what Panabon is doing. All right. Um as as you're kind of moving through the various stalls, um Panabon, go ahead and give me a well, I guess it's gonna be a perception test. Uh, and do give it, uh, so we are going to go with advantage. So with, with the rolls that the chat gives us, it's always going to be just the next roll, uh, that they have. And so we're going to go ahead and have you roll perception with advantage. That's for me? Uh, no, that's for, uh, Panabon. Oh, okay. Woohoo, let's see what happens. Okay. Um, as you're kind of pushing through the crowd, um, suddenly there's there's a slight jostle uh into panabon uh and panabon's no fool panabon knows what what a jostle in the crowd means except panabon's sure that they're not missing anything because whatever it is is in panabon's hand right now it's a bowl it's nice, nice bowl. Uh, and then all of a sudden, Panabon hears, You! Stop! Thief! Thief? Thief? There's a thief? Where's a thief? Uh, a large individual, towering for you two uh, as gnomes, approaches. He's got a, a long, thick mustache, um, a, a sort of turban, and that, or not like a term, like a, a square cap that then has a, a cloth that goes down the back to shield his neck from the sun. And he's just like coming towards you. Uh, you thief, stop! You did not pay for that! I'm just going to set uh, the bowl down away from me. All right, so as you consider setting, uh, finding a good place to set the bowl, um... It's at the edge of the same market. A thief? Why? I never. I've never been called a thief <laughs> yeah, in my and life. As, uh, as, you're I'm looking, as you're looking for where to set that bowl, I'm kind of like shifting into the crowd, like <laughs> putting a little distance. <laughs> Everything's right. fine. I, I'm, I'm scandalized. How dare you? I would never. <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur and I'm beautiful. I would never leave anything. Leave? Leave? <laughs> All right. See, I don't even know what the verb of it is. It's fine. So, uh, yeah, uh, on the edge of the market, kind of seated at a, a more reputable food stand, actually. Uh, but only, you know, the kind of place that serves a sort of um, just light uh, midday snack fare, uh, if you will. Um. We have two ladies sitting and just kind of watching the people move back and forth. Uh, and so with that, let's go ahead and start with, uh, I think uh, we'll start with Purunya and uh, go ahead and tell us what, what we're seeing. So Perunia is a dragonborn. So what a dragonborn looks like um, is scaled skin, um, humanoid body, uh, but my face definitely has um, more of a dragon features. Um, and my hair is, uh, looks more like spikes, uh, very flexible, maybe like dreadlocks. Um, Perunia is a blue dragon, which uh, has some heredity of red as well. So she has a very purple um, appearance. She is strong, even for a dragonborn, which is a pretty strong way. So muscular, um, still young. She's in her, her late 
teens. Um, and you can see that there's a, an air about her. She's somebody who likes to, attention, somebody who likes to be the center of the room um, and is not afraid to throw her weight around. All right. And her companion is probably the strangest individual in all the market uh, as far as the people of Merkudashta are concerned. Um, Leah, why don't you go ahead and describe Rosalia for us? So my name is Rosalia. I am an elven member of the Shadow Fae. I was born at a very dark time in the realm of the Shadow Fae. When I was six elven years old, I was brought up to fight, and that's all I know. I don't know my father, and I know my mother. My build is very tall, six foot. My skin is chestnut. I have very long hair, which I plate into war braids. And I wear various talismans and amulets, which I store the memory of the maps and the trail that I navigate. I'm a scout. I like to go out and forage and look for new lands for my people. And I also like to fight and be on the forefront of the battlefield. I have piercing green eyes and I have tattoos of my clan on my forehead, which mark which clan I belong to. I was kicked out of the Shadow Fae by my people. They want me to find out what is on, going on in the Tempest. And along my travels, I linked up with Perumna. I don't look like everyone here. And the one thing that stands out about me are my pointy ears. These are something that I can't hide. And every time I try to blend in in this blasted marketplace, they stand out like a sore thumb. Indeed. And she does. Uh, and from time to time, people do kind of give an odd look uh, towards towards uh, Rosalia. Um, gnomes have pointed ears too, but they're also like three feet tall. And they uh, their ears are actually wide and out uh, in this world. So there is no real uh, comparison for ears in, in the world as, as far as anyone knows. Um, and so as you are sitting there kind of watching uh, the various goings on, um, what's, what's on your minds? Well, we've just gotten off the boat, Rosalias. What do you think we should do next? Should we find a new job? We could also, we could leave the city and go try to do some work in, in the hills or in the sands. What do you think? I know that you're still charged with discovering this world. I, I feel like we need to go do more things for you to accomplish that goal. Well, I'm, I'm sizing up everyone in the marketplace. That bloke over there with the black cloak, he looks like he works as a mercenary. Maybe we can get some work from him. And I've been studying those two over there. They look like thieves. I think if we linked up with them on our next journey, maybe we could get what we needed in order to survive. I do agree. We should definitely think about adding more people to our group. I think the reason we got the last job is because we came together as a group um, with Rishi when we were on the boat, and that's the reason why we were able to fight off those pirates. Uh, so I like the idea of joining up with other folks. I'm just a little concerned is, well, I may or may not still have a warrant out for my arrest in Palacoon, so I just want to be careful about figuring out who we link up with. Well, it's kind of hard for you to hide because you are a six foot three purple dragon. So unless we cover you with no, a cloak, I don't know how we're going to get away with it. <laughs> At least I don't have pointy ears. Uh... I can hide them with my war breaks uh yes and your common is language is getting much better too yes but you can still hear a hint of elven which is why you should do the talking and i should do the watching i'll watch and you talk and then we'll get away with a lot of things i never mind talking so that i can do good because i can't lie to save myself <laughs> no, no, you really can't. I love you. 
you're a wonderful, wonderful person, but no, you should not try lying. Okay, then it's settled. I'll do the watching, you'll do the fighting, and you'll do the lying. I like this. As you come to this agreement, suddenly you hear a disturbance. Uh, maybe 50 meters away, uh, somebody is yelling, Stop, thief! Hey, I think those were the thieves you noticed. You want to try out that fighting stuff now? Let's go. Let's follow them. I want to see what they're getting into. Maybe we could join the fun. We rise from the table. All right. Uh, heading in that direction, it is not the same two thieves that you saw before because uh, those individuals were uh, both looking thievish. This this is just one thief, uh, perhaps. Uh, and uh, it is, it's hard to see in the press of the crowd. There is definitely a large uh, figure kind of standing with his arms out, uh, just, and he's kind of bent forward, like he's talking to someone low that you can't really see. Um, as, as you move in, though, um, there's something familiar about the hair, and no, no, Some, somebody else must have done their eyebrows that way. But is it? Could that be Panabon? No, 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 sir. No, 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 sir. Now, now, I, I worship a god that doesn't believe in thieving. My, my god's name is Melfrune, and he's, he's a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful dragon. And I would never, never in my life steal. That's such, such a sad thing to think. I, you have my bowl in your hand. Well, here's your here's your bowl. I happily I happily return it for you. I don't actually know how it came to my possession, and that is the truth. Wow! Mm, you'll stay here for the guard. Well, while uh, this interaction is happening, and I I kind of phased back around uh, into the crowd. Uh, can I can I tell which stall this guy came from? Uh, yeah, you definitely can. The bowl is it's you know it's it's got a got a look to it, you know. And so there is a stall that's selling cups and mugs and bowls that have sort of that same look. Uh, and it's, it's the only one within, you know, that distance. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, is kind of get to the outside of the crowd that's, that's starting to look at this guy shouting. And I'm going to um, get over to that stall and, and uh, uh, like I, I imagine it having like the, these tables with these bowls set up and stuff like that, and then like an overhang to kind of help keep the the sun in the shade with just a little exactly. bit of fabric. Um, so I don't want to damage the merchandise, and the fabric should be replaceable. So I'm gonna just uh, quietly go um, brief coal fire and uh, and whisper uh, and point my quill um, at it, which is heavily chewed on, and then uh, light a little bonfire right at the base of that fabric to light it up to hopefully distract the guy while we can run. Okay. So while you're doing all of that, um, yes. So somebody get the guards. You stay right there. You don't move. I got my eye on you. Oh, oh well, in that case, um, would you like to see a magic trick? I'm really good at magic tricks. Not so good with thieving. Uh, but while we wait for wait for uh, um, wh which stall was yours? I, I think I think your stall might be on fire uh, a little bit. By the you're way, not maybe. gonna weasel out of this that easy. Um, you, you're like right on them, Perunia. It is. I am going to um go up and um I've got some history with Panabon and as much as I have some serious talking to do with him it's not going to be this guard that takes him out so um I'm going to go in excuse me what seems hmm. to be the trouble here we have a thief I'm sure you are mistaken this is man I've been watching this is a friend of mine from the market I've been watching him the whole time I saw someone hand him that bowl. Hand it to him. It wasn't him. Are you blind? I, I, that does that doesn't make any sense. Ask my uh, companion here. She can vouch for it as well. Uh, he looks over at 
Uh, and as he turns to look at uh, Rosalia, um, and he kind of squints his eyes, kind of to look into her cow, and then and then he, what up? my stall, and then he just like turns and bolts towards the stall, uh, which is definitely the top is just, you know, fire little fabric just kind of wisping down, um, and and. Panabon, you actually still have the bowl? Great. As long as I'm going to be blamed, I'm going to keep the darn bowl. It's fine. Pocketing the bowl. Um, the, the crowd is now confused. There's like people moving away from the fire. There's people gonna, like kind of trying to run and maybe help put the fire out. Um, but definitely a, a enough chaos to make uh, take advantage of, perhaps. We got to move. Come on. Now. Let's go. Yay. Um, I really hope my Friend knows where I am, but yes, let's let's. let's we can go find her later. We got it. Go. I it, and yeah, meanwhile, as I'm, I, I'm making my way back. I I see Panabon with strangers that are large, and look weird. So I'm uh a, a little uh, nervous about that. So I'm gonna whisper to Minya, follow them, and let Minya uh keep track while I kind of watch from a distance. All right. So, uh, yeah, um, you are moving through the crowd at this point. Uh, who's in the lead, Perunia or Panabon? Oh, it's Perunia. Uh, I'm a little worried about where he might head, and I might lose him if he's in front of me. So uh, now that I've got him back, so to speak, I'm not ready to let him go on his own. Uh, also, I'm afraid um, that he'll be spotted. So he is positioned between Rosalia and myself. Okay. Uh, and just, well, uh, I, well, 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 yes. just a quick reminder, they. All right, go ahead, Panabon. Uh, th that is not the worst idea that ha that you had um, to keep to keep Panabon in the, the middle. Um, they're they're grateful that they didn't have to try to. Uh, I'd been I've been working on this really great sob story about having just been two feet tall and growing to three feet tall. So I'm still trying to figure things out. I'm glad I didn't have to workshop that on the street. Um, but yeah, somewhere that's not currently here would be really great to be right now. And I'm also kind of looking around to see if I can see Shay. Um, I'd love I'd love to know if I can see Minya though, as I know what Minya looks like. So where Minya is, Shay is not far from. Uh, there is definitely a lot of people here. Um, spotting Minya would be very difficult, but you can go ahead and make that perception test if you like. Oh, why not? Uh, why not? All right. Um, I feel like I saw a die roll, but then I didn't see a result. Oh, I got an eighteen. There it which is. Which is there the result is. that I enjoy that result immensely. So. Yes. Um. Unfortunately, it does not meet threshold of twenty. So, uh, you do not see Minya yeah. as you are running, and there is a crowd, and Perunia is trying to make sure you keep up. So, there you go. I'm keeping up. We're going to take him to um, a local bar that uh, uh, Rosalia and I have good relations with the owners and a lot of the patrons there. All right. Do you want to take me to a bar where you're good with people? Do you feel? Ah, uh, Panabon, you haven't changed since the last I saw you. I'll be on my best behavior, promise. You better be, because I just saved your tiny behind. <laughs> it's I had I had a, I was I was doing okay. I got a bowl out of it, so that's good. Free bowl. I mean, you know. Um, cool. It only takes about ten to fifteen minutes to get to the uh, the tavern that you're heading to, the drunken octopus. Um, it is. Uh, closer to the docks, so so the market is a little bit away from the docks, maybe three or four blocks away, uh, and then the drunken octopus is just kind of uh, sitting on, it's one block over from the dock, so buildings behind it are facing the docks, um, and that is where you are arriving to. Um, 
Yeah. All right. So we're going to go in and um, take a seat in a booth in the back where somebody coming in wouldn't automatically be able to see uh, Panavon on site. Um, and I have some questions to ask them. So as we sit down, um, I address Panabon. So it's been a while. How are I, you? I, I'm doing, I mean, I, I'm doing better than I was three minutes ago. And, you know, it, it's a really nice day. Don't you think? It's, it's a nice day. It was a lovely day outside. Would you like me to buy you a drink? Um, I've... I've got a little bit of capital. I can, I can, I could buy you a drink if you'd like. I feel like, I feel like that would be a good idea. Would you like a drink? I'll take a drink. You had somebody with you, no? Yes, but um, they're very capable. Um, they're they're a lot like me in some ways, and very much not like me in other ways, and they'll be fine. I'm I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're somewhere that is. That is somewhere in the city. Yeah. Mm. Panaban, I'd like to introduce you to my traveling companion, Rosalia. Hello, Rosalia. I'm sure you've heard lots of lovely things about me. What are you? <laughs> Gorgeous is what I am. I don't know. I'm just an ordinary gnome, a little bit, little bit dazzling. Um, I perform is what I do. Um, I don't steal bowls. That that was a one-off. I'm not quite sure what happened there and how I missed that. Um, but I got a bowl, so I'm pretty happy about that. You are a troublemaker, aren't you? <laughs> yes, thank you for noticing. I mean, no, I would never make trouble. That's not something I ever do. No. If you remember, Panabon is part of the very big reason why I have a warrant out for my arrest in Pelicune. Oh, that that's okay. I have a warrant out for my arrest too. You're not alone in that at all. You're, you're, <laughs> I, I mean, I probably have. Who knows? Mm. I see trouble. Maybe we should take him with them with us, and if something happens, we can give them up as a sacrifice. That's you're not going you're to Ireland, are you? Out loud. <laughs> No, we have no traveling pans to Ireland at this point. Uh, thank, uh, thank Melfrun. Okay, well, as long as we're not going to Ireland, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. If thieves are going to be so bad here, they're just shoving bowls into people's hands. I don't know how long I want to stay. It's just no class, no class at all. Just a low caliber of thief here. Well, I'm sure you'll have to ask your companion if she would like to join us as well. Uh, at this time, uh. The server ar arrives at the table uh, and kind of looks at looks at Rosalia and just kind of nods and and Perina and then looks at Panabon and you keep strange company, uh, Dragonborn. Uh, do you need anything at the table? Three drinks. Let's make them pretty strong. Okay. Uh, very good. Uh, three drinks and uh, anything to eat. We might have one more guest joining us. We'll order food then. Ah, very well. Uh, I'll return with drinks. Um, and uh, yes. Uh, and with that, she turns and heads off to go pick up your drinks. So, um, anything life? Running into you here. What 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 you doing? What you what you, what you up to? Well, how are you how are you doing? I, I um you know I think I'm adjusting to this mercenary lifestyle pretty well. So we just got off um, doing some bodyguard work off a ship. Uh, we were um, ran into some pirates, had some good good times, but I think we're just waiting to pick up our next job. So hmm, I think this might be a good time to join forces. Okay, but there were pirates. You, you. Mm -hmm. We've also we've fought That's some kind of... spiders. Yeah, it's um. We've had quite a few encounters. Uh, I must say, I've gotten much better as a fighter. I show him my sword, which I didn't have the last time he and I were together. It's quite beautiful. Two-handed blade. Oh, that is wonderful. I'm very happy for you, and hoping that you don't run me through with that. 
would be would be ideal for me. Um, but yes, no, I'm, well, I'm glad to see you with writing. That depends on your behavior, doesn't it? <laughs> you don't have any bowls on you, right? No, no bowls from the seal, so you're probably okay. No. Yeah. yeah. The time, uh, it doesn't take long for the server to kind of return with three drinks, um, sets them down, and, and uh, she kind of looks pointedly at Perunia and um, uh, open, open a tab. I pay her for the three drinks because eh, sometimes things happen and we need to leave quicker. Um, so I, I slide the money towards her and I say, hey, any uh, fights locally you've heard of? Any rings? Any matches coming up? Mm, no, I. You might ask Cage at the bar, because uh, he pays more attention to that sort of thing. Um, but I, uh, I definitely am not. Uh, have not heard of any anything coming up in the next few days. Okay, I might be in town for a little while. I think I might hit hmm. up a, a cage match or two if I've got time. As, you know, as as you will, I'm sure you'll do fine. Um, and anything else for the table now, or uh... we'll wait. Thank you. Okay. Uh, very good. Very good. Um, probably want to order in the next few minutes regardless before the dinner rush does arrive um but uh um but i'll, I'll stop here first uh before i stop anywhere else uh, and then she turns and gives you some space there in the corner uh and you are tucked in a corner it's uh it's a nice little nook there um yeah it's you know, there's there's a couple of other patrons inside the bar, one sitting at the bar, um, one sitting kind of by themselves at a table, uh, just looks to be in his cups. And, um, you know, just the one server right now. And you see Keej behind the bar. Uh, he's a very brawny, uh, muscular, bald fellow that, um, you know, just enjoys hanging out with people and shooting the breeze while everyone gets inebriated. You know, that, that kind of guy. Oh, how wonderful. Uh, and seeing him up there and working tonight, um, I do have a pretty good relationship towards him. I'm going to actually um, tell the table, oh, I'm going to be right back. And I'm going to get up and, and go approach him and, and greet him. All right. So uh, he looks up as he's kind of polishing a, a glass. Ah, Perunia, welcome. Gage, hey, how are you? I, uh, we're here. Do it every day. People come, people go. They need to drink. Uh, Rosalia and I are in town a little bit and thinking we might, you know, pick up some some work if you've heard of anything in town. Work? Uh, there's always caravans. Um, I think there's one heading up to uh, Gigi, um soon. Uh, the capital in uh, Vishan. Uh, I don't think you've been. Uh, Always love going good. places I haven't been before. Hmm. Yes, it's quite a big city. Uh, and um, there, the um, the Blue Jok are hosting, I believe, uh, some matches uh, probably I think tomorrow, tomorrow night. Um, mm, and tomorrow night might work though. with my schedule. Uh, indeed. Um, uh, I will not probably be able to attend, so you have a good chance of winning. Uh-huh, sure. Our last match, I, I don't know. I think we're still pretty evenly matched. Mm -hmm. You have youth on your side. But... Uh... Yes, uh, the caravans and fights, uh, those are, I believe, what you wanted to know. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, who's this fellow that you've brought in with you? A uh, friend from Pelicoon, uh, believe it or not. Haven't seen him in a long time. Not bad people. Mm. Mm, I see. Well, um... interesting, interesting character. 
just yes. the looks of, of him. Uh, but uh, yeah, your company is yours to keep. Uh, I hear so... he makes beautiful trinkets. Oh well, uh, there is definitely a market for that here in in Merkudashta, um at the marketplace, as a matter of fact. Well. If you hear of anything else, um, I am interested in, in the, taking some of the work from the caravan um, and the cage fight. If you hear of anything else, uh, always happy to have you throw a bone my way. Thank you, friend. Very and I passed him um, some of the, the local currency as well. Okay. Um, as So while you're up there sitting back at the booth uh, is Rosalia and uh, Panavon and Rosalia looks at Panabon. Panabon looks at Rosalia. Hello. <laughs> Rosalia is a creature of very few words. She likes to feel out the situation. And in this situation, she does not understand why they are with the short one. This is what she has nicknamed them. <laughs> and she does not feel that the short one has her best interest in mind, but she does feel that the short one has their best interest in mind. So she is currently staring him down in a very harsh way. With side. Go ahead. Go ahead and let's let's have an intimidation roll from Rosalia. Uh, and you have a uh, you have advantage on this uh, because uh, Vort has um, given granted you advantage. Uh, so remember on the character sheet we're going to go to skills and then at the Bottom, there you go. And then roll it again uh, because you do have advantage. So we're going to take the better of the two rolls. Panabon, that's a 21. That's but exciting. I, <laughs> I leave it to you nice. to describe uh, your response there to this withering gaze. So two gnomes walk into a bar. <laughs> and one gnome says to the other one, how are we going to get up there? <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> no? Is this thing on? As, uh, as Panabon is trying to make small talk with the, the very scary cloaked creature person, uh, I wait for the, the door to open as the dinner rush is starting in this bar and I'm going to sneak Minya in there. Uh, Cause I've been, I've been watching from outside the windows by like jumping and like trying to get glimpses inside. And then finally I find some like crates outside and a barrel to crawl on and kind of peek in the window and watch. Uh, but I, from what Minya followed and what I like heard from Minya, um, I, I, I don't have a good read. Like, I feel like things are okay, but also tense. And I, I don't know what Panabon wants to do. So uh, I know Panabon uh, from our time together by now knows that I can communicate with Minya. So as Minya kind of rolls into under the feet of uh, all the patrons, um, Minya goes under the booth and starts kind of knocking into Panabon's foot. Um, to get their attention. And yeah. Panabon, it, Panabon is well aware of this form of communication. It's not new or anything. Um, so Panabon just kind of looks at Rosalia and says, yes, I'm having a great time in this booth. There's, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like any harm is going to come to me or anything. Um, so it, it's, it's great to meet old friends from, from Palacune. Um, yes, it's great to meet old friends and make new ones. Yes. As usual, Shay is confused by the awkward messaging that she receives from Panabon. It's like, the words say one thing, but the tone says something else. <laughs> so, but with what Minya is able to translate, uh, Shay pulls her hood over and uh, just tries to to slink uh, into the uh, the bar and kind of keep her distance and and watch, uh, but kind of inch closer so she can hear with her own ears what's going on and maybe get a better read of the situation than what Minya can translate. 
Okay. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, so Shailun steps in. Uh, the first thing she notices when she enters is like right at the entrance, it's, it's pretty open uh, space. There's several tables, the bars at the far end of the building. Uh, and she can hear Panabon uh, to the right. Now, directly to the right of the entrance is a staircase that goes up. So obviously not upstairs, but are kind of around the staircase uh, and, and kind of peeking around. Uh, she is able to see that Panabon is in a corner booth uh, with the um, scary elf lady. Um, no dragonborn, who right now appears to be at the bar, but is about to turn and kind of head back towards the table, you think. Uh, I'm going to kind of step the other way, uh, so away from the staircase, so that I can kind of round the perimeter and maybe follow uh, the the dragonborn back that way. Um, I, I've got some plans in mind, and I've I'm I, as I've got my hood up, I'm I'm clutching my my spell book to my chest uh, and kind of ready. I have like four spells ready to go if I need to, but I'm I'm kind of just trying to plot and see what the situation is before I go ham. <laughs> I'd like to roll perception to see if I notice, and I think I might recognize her as the companion, but I want to notice if I see the cloaked figure um, around me. And I'd Sure, love the to question roll is, too. yeah, okay, go for it. Roll stealth and then roll perception, and we'll see who wins. Look at that, player versus player con uh, conflict right in the first hour. <laughs> I spent my net 20 on my wedding, so a three is just where I'm going to be tonight. That's fine. Uh -huh. I'm, like, I'm um, sneaking like in Skyrim, where it's like <laughs> really are, obvious. You have, have, you have like just a the song like Kronk has. You have like your own theme song for when you try to do stealth. <laughs> yep. Well done. Um Yeah, no, so, there, there, there she is, kind of sneaking around the table as far as you can tell, and... um so I'm going to turn and say, ah, Panavan's friend. Our table is this way. And I'm just going to take her and gesture towards the table to come join us. I kind of stop mid-creep <laughs> uh, and look around. <laughs> and, like, how loud was that? Does Panavan overhear that at all? I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty loud. I'm Yeah, it's, it's, it's not far enough away for it to be a, a thing where it's, yeah. It's definitely you that I'm talking to. So my eyes are just going to flicker straight to Panabon. Like, do I go ham? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what does that look like, though? And then what does Panabon do so, in response? So if I'm, like, looking at Perunia, then I go... <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's the do I go ham look. It's just I slide to the left. That's it. <laughs> it's like, fuck, I got caught, but also... <laughs> There's some intensity to it as well. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's no signs or hand gestures like, do I pull him up? It's just... <laughs> In response, Panabon just does this, which is not Nomi Malone from Showgirls, but is like a no symbol, and it's not, it's not going to be tactful at all, because there's no point in being tactful, because uh, Rune is very well of how far Panabon's tact goes, generally speaking. Okay, so she's gonna kind of like lower the book a little bit and um, kind of like watch the big dragonborn, but kind of bustle over and 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 stand at the 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 head of the table. I'm gonna push him. We'll, 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 we'll be fine. She has, uh, she has, she has a normal tongue and both hands, so so not evil. So might as well, might as well come and sit down. I don't think, I don't think there's there's a there's a there's a talking out of this. So come come join us. Be comfortable. Shay, like white knuckling the book, <laughs> uh, just kind of looks at uh, up at at Perunia and then at Rosalia. And then Panabon and like without even moving her hands at all, just like slides into the the booth and like right next to Panabon as though he can protect her from inside the uh, anyway. Uh, she's very nervous. I motion to the waitress. Dinner for four, please. 
Uh, she approaches, oh, uh, very good. Um, just what we have uh, with the chef's making? Yes, whatever the special is, and one more drink for our new friend. Uh, very well, very well. Uh, and she heads off to get food and the like. Uh, and there, there you are. Um, outside, however, uh, just kind of entering onto the road, uh, coming in from the docks. Um, locks, you're fairly certain uh, that you, oh yeah, there it is. Uh, right over there on the corner of that building uh, is the raven or crow. He's never sure which. Um, something about the beak, not sure. Uh, but that said, um, and it's just sitting there and you see that this is obviously a tavern. There is a sign out front that's got like a, a mug uh, and what looks like a chicken, like a cooked chicken, maybe not. It, something's off about it, but close enough, a big, you know, kind of a ball thing uh, with like a dressing maybe around it. It's carved in wood, you know. Um, Spoiler alert, it's an octopus. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and as you're kind of noticing that and seeing kind of exactly where the crow uh, or raven went, uh, you notice a sign, you look back, and the crow is gone at this point. Uh, but there are two men uh, sitting at that corner. Uh, they're talking. Uh, and go ahead and give me an insight check. Will do. Uh, Aegis, there's a tavern. So it smells great. <laughs> so your your vision wants us to get drunk? Yeah, this is different than last time. Like last time we did we followed the bird, there were bandits. This time a bar. There's yeah, possibly bandits here. I as still well. think we should go over there. You see those two guys? There's something about them. Can I roll inside as well? Yes, you yeah. can roll insight as well. Uh, and Danny, I got a. Uh, it, it didn't show. Oh no! Uh, you got to roll it. Make sure you either click the button twice or roll it into the. Um, oh, I did, uh, and it showed me what came up. But okay, uh, I will do it again. Ah, uh, not as good, but it's. <laughs> um, oh boy! You are. <laughs> neither of you are sure what's going on, but it does look a little odd, uh, and. And as you're kind of watching, uh, the one fella just kind of taps the one guy on the shoulder, like, like kind of a, and, and turns and walks off. And then that, the fella that stays turns and kind of heads into the bar, uh, the, the the tavern. And um, yeah, that's uh, uh, several other people seem to be entering the tavern at this point. Uh, just getting around dinner time, you think? Yeah, there was something suspicious about that. Did you catch that? Uh, they look like two fellows. They yes. Talking. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I got a hunch. Uh, uh, why don't we go in there and we just kind of sit near the the guy? Very well. All I'm right. sure they won't. They won't notice us. And I grab. Oh, my, they'll. they'll... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take off my hat. <laughs> I'll hike it up. <laughs> 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 Indeed. So yeah, uh, they walk in. Locks takes off the hat, puts it like to his chest. Is like, I'm not suspicious, even though he sticks out a lot. <laughs> we both okay. stick out a lot. <laughs> Why are there so many all right, so... people in this world? <laughs> in this world, they're everywhere. Um, yeah. So everywhere. entering into the tavern, it's uh, there is their seat at the bar. Uh, there's several stools, empty stools at the bar. Uh, there is one table that has three chairs um, that's available. It's it's not right in the middle, but it's not off to the side either. Uh, and then most of the other tables have at least some patrons. Um, I guess we're taking. Uh, and your guy seat. is sitting uh, <laughs> is is sitting at the bar. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I will. I'll I'll kind of instinctually head towards the three table chair because I've got this big old pack on. Um, so we'll kind of go there pull out one seat and just slump that thing on top of it. Like it makes, it makes like a, a racket a little bit like, poof, and the, and the clang from my shield um, just hits the, hits the, t the chair. Um, I unfazed by how much of a scene that made. And yeah, I just, I just uh, put everyone it on. else is not unfazed by this scene as all heads in, in the inn 
uh, kind of turning your direction. And the four of you at the corner table, uh, you do hear that noise as well. Uh, it may draw your attention or not. Um, but uh, if you do, you will look over there and see uh, this gentleman kind of setting up a spot for their pack uh, and their ginormous shield. Uh, and kind of next to him is another fellow who looks a little... A little more self-conscious about what's going on at the table than the other than the other fellow, but uh, yeah. How how pretty is that shield? Like, if I wanted to, like, try to it's, try to take the shield. Pretty. How how pretty how pretty is the it's shield? A, it's a good looking shield. It's got a it's got a giant symbol that kind of looks like um, it's they look like feathers, but they're in the shape of like what what could be perceived as a swan, um, uh, with in golden. The symbol is golden with some purple accents. Um, it's a little banged up because it's it's been used, but but still the design of it is is quite pretty. Um, I put that down, and if you guys are watching, you also hear as I pull my chair out and sit down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Locks just Shame puts his hand that. in his head, I mean his <laughs> hand, yeah, whatever, and then goes to the bar to order drinks because now they're very obvious that they're in there. So he's like talking to the bar owner. I'm sorry about my friend. Uh, it, it's our first time here. We're we're just passing through, looking for work. You know, can I get two drinks? <laughs> Yeah, the, the server comes by to, to drinks uh, very well. And um, we have, and she starts kind of listing off some of the, the things that they have for, for the meal. Uh, the, the main meal uh, is apparently a, um, like a, uh, a baked octopus something. Uh, mm -hmm. The way they say it is, uh, is Mosayo uh, with some other stuff. When you ask what that is, so it's, you know, octopus. Um, and well, uh, and then there's and also some there's also like a like not a, like a like a bird meal dish. It's not chicken. They say something else, uh, mm -hmm. and um, and some sort of uh, some sort of lamb. Um, but uh, it also it's, I mean this, this it smells marvelous. If your name is Aegis, uh, in we'll here. take one of each. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna so, order uh, a plate then for. You and you and your bag. Very good. Uh, and she turns and uh, and heads back to go ahead and, and get all of that for you. Um, as we sit down, oh, I, 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 I put my hand on his back and I very subtle. Hmm? What do you? Whatever do you mean? <laughs> just just enjoy your drink, man. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I will. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So the the you see the one fellow. He's definitely just kind of he's sitting at the corner. Uh, he's got a mug in front of him. Uh, if you want uh, for Lachlan to go ahead and make another insight check, uh, I believe you have advantage gifted by a Vort uh, because your hat is amazing. Nah. <laughs> your can I make one too? Just because uh, that's that's kind of what. Aegis would do that. Like, if we're looking at this guy, I'm I'm gonna start trying trying to pick him apart. So, um, sure, you can, yeah. and with advantage. Oh, awesome, Danny. Did did you see that? I do see it. All right, Ooh. such a pretty shield. Pretty pretty shield. It is. Insight. Oh, I forgot about the. Okay, sorry. Getting getting used to the system. <laughs> I like pretty things. Yeah, so boy. the two of you can tell that that fellow, he is not here to drink or to eat. Uh, he's got a drink in front of him, but he's definitely not drinking from it. Uh, you notice that he's got uh, probably a, it's probably a short sword. It's too small for a, like a long sword, but it's definitely bigger than a dagger uh, just under his cloak, which in, its, in and of itself is not odd. Um, it's just something to kind of take note of. But his attention is affixed across the tavern uh, completely uh, to a corner where there are uh, four, well, four folks that just aren't from here, as far as you can tell. Um, you know, 
more expats maybe from someplace uh you know start start your own community if you want um as as folks do um but but yeah that's that's kind of what you notice uh most people are there's there's definitely people in between a lot of folks sitting at various tables uh and chairs uh eating and and drinking that's um, uh and that's the general yeah hey ages mm. you notice this guy ain't take a drink of his drink yes his attention is fixed firmly on those four people. Yeah, he looks like he's here to do something. Something. The last time, like I said, and he leans over a little closer. They're trying to be be subtle. They're not subtle at all. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he he goes. I feel like this guy's about to start some trouble with those four. Some some just ain't doesn't feel right. What do you think that we should do? Uh, I think we should wait till he makes a move. We don't want to get in trouble in a new town on our first day. Very well. Um, let's see. Right quick. Mm. Meanwhile, over at the table uh, of four, what's uh, what's happening there? All anyone is going to hear from under Pandabon's breath is, what a pretty shield. That, that's all you're going to have to Pandabon for like the next minute and a half, so talk among you. It's so pretty! How attached to the shield do you think they are? It's, it's their shield. We have other things to worry about. Oh, I'm plus one a bowl, you never know. I could add a shield to a collection of things. Looks pretty big, though. Don't make me say the word. <sighs> hmm. I like you already. Anyone who can no keep Panabon in check is good in my book. She looks no absolutely terrified of you. <laughs> yeah, something doesn't feel right. There's a weird energy in this place. I think we should keep our eyes open. Hmm. Ah, uh, well, you were from a place with a lot more danger. Uh, it wasn't so bad when I was up at the bar, she says, looking around. It's not the energy of the Dark Fae. It's more a new kind of energy that I haven't sensed before. I think we should send somebody in that area of the room over there to investigate. Somebody I, I volunteer small. Me. Yes, you. <laughs> You would be the perfect person. And you, you mean over there by the shield? <laughs> over there by the shield. It's fine. So, uh, Panabon, uh, very sprightly, uh, leaps up uh, and kind of does a little bit of a because because Panabon's seated inside the booth and Shay is on the outside, but uh, Panabon is a little bit of an acrobat and is able to kind of do this sort of flip around thing. Bit. A little bit, mean, a little bit, a uh, and and head out of the head out of the booth, uh, towards uh, to, to you know to check on whatever whatever it is that Rosalia feels is is going on, uh, and what happens next we'll find out after our break uh, here. Uh, we're going to take a ten minute break, and see you after that. Hey everybody, welcome back. We are here for the second half of our first uh, episode of Like Clockwork. Really excited. Um, I gotta put my goggles on. Hold on a second. <laughs> um, this is, uh, no, not these ones. These ones. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> gotta make it official. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it can't, can't do it without, without the goggles. So with that, yes, we're back. Uh, and so we are now in our, uh, we've got uh, our, our map of the tavern, uh, the interior of the tavern. Uh, I, I do want to say that all of these maps that we're going to be using, uh, these are all part of um, the things that you're going to get from the Kickstarter uh, once it is, uh, once it's released. Uh, one of our stretch goals is going to be to package like as much material as we can from the city that they're in right now uh, and, and kind of give that, uh, give that to our backers. Uh, and some of our patron, uh, patrons on Patreon um, access to this stuff so that uh, folks can start kind of 
playing in this world with us um, because that is the ultimate goal uh, for me anyway, is to create this for everybody else. So uh, without further ado, we do have our combat, uh, our battle map up here. Uh, there's plenty of patrons in here. You can see that they've got the white base. There's a few extra NPCs around. Uh, we can see in the corner, um, we have uh, Shailun, Parunya, and uh, Rosalia. Uh, they are in that uh, bottom left-hand side corner. Um, you've got uh, kind of in the middle, uh, near the top, you've got Aegis and uh, Lox. You've got um, Panabon kind of moving past this table with the blue tablecloth, uh, heading towards the Shield of Beauty. And um, <laughs> and then you've got the shifty fella up here in this corner, sitting on his bar stool, looking, looking, um, and uh, yeah, that which, uh, that's which one's the shifty one? Uh, if you hover over uh, for the players, if you hover over them, you will see the names of who they are, unless they're just not important for our intensive purposes at this time. Uh, but over in the corner, you'll see unknown human. Unknown cause, human. Cause <laughs> how it is a how human, I classify everyone. Unknown it is a human, human that is unknown. Um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah. Panabon has worked their way out from behind the table and is, is heading up in this sort of direction to see what there is to see, uh, which one of the things there is to see is a very large, shiny shield. It's true. If it weren't so shiny, I probably wouldn't be as attracted to it, but it's very shiny. And I feel like a beautiful shield deserves um, to be recognized. And so, uh, because I'm diminutive in, in stature, I'm aware of... Um, I'm aware of many things. And then as I'm getting closer to the shield, um, can I can I see the unknown human? Is that in my line of sight or is the You shield can see in everybody in here. So if Hello? you would like to just kind of give me a general insight roll to see if you notice any of them being particularly shifty. I would love to give you an insight roll. Mm. I'll take that insight nope. roll. The um <laughs> The, uh, yeah, the, this section, you know, there's several people over here. The, the, the server doesn't seem very shifty. Uh, she seems like she's busy. Um, bartender, he's also not very shifty looking. Um, in fact, he seems kind of like a happy-go-lucky fella. Um, the people sitting at the bar don't seem shifty. They're doing things that people do at the bar. They got their drinks. They're sitting at a bar. Um, these two at the table, the ones with the shield, though, they're like leaned in on each other and whispering conspiratorially. Um, that's kind of shifty. Do they have wallets? I mean, most folks have wallets. Um, there is a glittered forehead gnome walking around the bar. Um, are you trying to stealth, Panabon? Uh, Panabon doesn't really do stealth, so no, not not really. Can I make the perception um, check, gonna... please? <laughs> well, I mean, you see, you don't have to make a check to see Panabon like cruising out around the thing and heading kind of towards the bar, and just kind oh. of looking around all wide eyed. Um, I'm, but you can Fox make an insight talking, check. Oh, to see what his intentions are. To well, see what their intentions are. Um, I'm like Locks and I are kind of locked, locked in like our conversation about what's happening, and uh, my eye just kind of catches Panabon to the side there, and um, <clears throat> he he seems to be paying close attention to the group off in the corner. What is that there? <laughs> yeah um there's something on his face or their <laughs> face here um and then i turned completely to panabon 
and stare at you. <laughs> no I'm insight okay. check needed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just get closer because we're, we're doing this now. So this is happening. So Panabon, Panabon approaches and takes a seat. Got, got a well, little chair there. Oh. Uh, okay, so grabs a chair from uh, the other table uh, that has vacated since y'all have arrived. Uh, and yeah, takes a seat because the other, the third seat is um, occupied by bag and shield. Hi there. Hi. Um, I'm a gnome, and gnomes are known for their love of craftsmanship. And I just could not help but notice your shield. I would love to know more about your beautiful, marvelous shield. I would have like to there. know at what point we were invited to sit down with us. Yeah, we're oh. not kind of strangers here. Well, everyone's a stranger to someone. My name is Panabon. Hello. Um, I tinker, as gnomes are wont to do, and um, I'm I'm just not a very subtle person. I don't pick up on social cues, you know, so sometimes I just join tables and I just say hello and compliment something that I think is worth complimenting. Uh, so, simultaneously, hello. Dan, can I take a look at what the guy in the corner is doing now? You can, yeah, take a look over in that corner. Uh, just still the same role, or you want me to roll something different? Uh, you can make a perception test, but yeah, I mean, literally, you take a look over in that corner. Oh. <laughs> He's <All right>. gone. <laughs> ah. Gosh darn it, you little gnome. We were... Did All I right, interrupt man. something? Uh, and I start looking around for, for, for the shifty unknown human. Yeah, make perception tests. Nope. <laughs> oh, buddy! <laughs> I was, I'm so I'm I'm surprised by We're the guard, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um. All right. Yeah. You don't. You do not see where he went. Um. We lost him. I say. You hear Panabon? You hear that? Who? <laughs> Who did you lose? Who were you looking for? You, you were sitting there in the corner. There was a gentleman sitting at the bar, and he was watching your party. You're just going to tell him that? That's exciting. <laughs> Why? <I'm terrified. laughs> Why not? <laughs> yes. Uh, let's so... have Rosalia make a perception test while they're having this conversation. <laughs> uh, yeah, so go ahead, Panabon. Um so did did they have any special tattoos or menacing? I, did they have a tongue? Did they have both hands? Did you see hands? Were there hands? Because if there were no hands, would we have noticed any details, uh, Dan? You did not notice that they did not have hands. No, no, the tattoos and such. <laughs> uh, so they're they're mostly in like a hood and cowled over. So uh, not on the face, as far as you know, and not on the hands that you noticed uh, were not not there. Didn't notice there weren't hands. <laughs> I mean, you can't say for sure there were hands because you weren't like looking to see if they had hands. You just assumed they did, uh, it, but you did not notice that they didn't. It, it, uh, then I'll say it had not occurred to me to check if they had hands. Locks, did you notice hands? No, I, I didn't not notice hands. What are you talking about? I just, I just have to say that in my life experience, there have been times that there have been people with no hands, and those were not good times. So if you see a person without hands, that's a person you don't want to know. There's a, just there's a, you know. like a, just a, just a, a concentrated look of confusion in your direction. <laughs> just. <laughs> I know, I, I know what it sounds like, but I'm just letting you know that in the world in which we live, that. Yeah, there are there have been things that have happened, and I, I lean past um, uh, the yeah. small figure to my friend, and I go, "We followed the bird here. We were supposed to follow that guy. I just, I, I know it. We got to figure out what's going on." At that point, everybody rolled initiative. Uh oh, our first uh, time. Of how do we roll initiative? Our first initiative. Your first initiative. <laughs> <laughs> Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I can't 
can't believe I rolled that badly. Really, Perunia? I like. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't love know. it. <sighs> yes. I hope you don't all die before I can help. <laughs> uh, Runia, it's because you were drinking so much. You were being so friendly. I mean, I was trying to get Shay to talk to me, you know. That was hard. Okay. So, in Dungeons Dragons 5th Edition, we have sometimes what we call is, like, you know, your surprise. So you still get to have a turn. You just don't get to do anything on your turn if you're surprised. Um, and it's not that you're surprised like shock. It's just that whatever is happening, you weren't ready to respond to. So the first person to go with 21 is Lox. There is... I mean, you're talking. You're you're wondering where the yeah, guy went. Uh, I, I just leaned over and said what I said to, right. to Aegis. And so the similar the similar for uh, Lachlan, Panabon, Shailun, and Aegis. Rosalia has specifically said uh, Leah has specifically said that Rosalia is like hyper vigilant right now. So I had uh, I had Rosalia do a perception test. Rosalia, you see this individual kind of like sliding along the wall uh, just just kind of above you right by the stairs between the table and the, the staircase kind of sliding up uh intent on what's going on at the table um very much not like this is this is someone at best spying on you at worst trying to stick a knife into somebody Rosalia puts her hand on her weapons because she has an instinct that tells her something is about to go down. She reaches her other hand onto Perunia's shoulder and whispers in her ear, there is trouble right over there in the corner. It is dark magic. If we don't do something now, something will be done to us. So we must take action. All right. So you're warning Perunia. Um, getting... Uh, grabbing a weapon um and we'll go over that in a moment uh but yeah grabbing the weapon is pretty much your action um do you want to use your bonus action for anything uh so your bonus action uh available bonus actions are to cast a hex spell uh to put on the fellow uh, so that if you do have to fight him you can murder him quickly um and i believe that is the only you can misty step uh and I believe that's what you have available for bonus actions. I will put a hex spell on or them, whatever they okay. are. Okay. All right. So noticing the fellow, you kind of, as you're tapping Perunia and getting your blade ready, you kind of work a little bit of, of the magic that you've kind of been granted uh, and, and say a few harsh syllables in, in your native crown tongue uh, that kind of gets everyone's attention, and now the fellow does realize that you are onto him. Uh, and that is your action, unless you're trying to move. Now you are inside the seat, uh, so you would have to kind of vault over the the booth or across the table if you wanted to move, but you can. I do want to move. I want to miss this step if I can. Uh, you cannot. Uh, you just okay. use your bonus action to uh, to cast the hex, um, but you can mm -hmm. like just jump over the booth or something to kind of get out of the way. Okay, so I jump over the booth because I want my arms free and I don't want anything in the way. And I head as close as possible to the person that I assume is a spy or an intruder. I don't know which, but I want to figure out how to, as close as possible to cause damage without getting hurt myself. Okay, so you're able, given the, given the difficult terrain of the movement over the, the booth, you're able to get to this point right here. It's not close enough to attack the fellow. Uh, what weapon do you have in hand right now? The weapon that I have in hand is a blade, a small blade. It's a dagger. Small blade. Okay, so you only so you have pulled out a, a a dagger. Now, is this one of your throwing daggers or just a standard dagger? This is one of my throwing daggers. Okay. Uh, so at this point, uh, everyone kind of sees Rosalia kind of vault over the booth and step out, and in her hand is a sort of a bluish. Uh, from a distance, it looks like a blade. From up close, there seem to be some etchings on it. It almost looks like a feather, uh, like just a really long sort of feather. And uh, and she's got that ready. Next up is our assailant. 
All right. Uh, noticing Shay uh, Rosalia kind of seeing uh, and casting magic, uh, the individual looks over in the corner, kind of curses, like, you know, just like, and then turns, uh, looks across, notices Panabon, pauses for just a moment, and then starts to kind of move back and away. Hits the door and is kind of trying to run out into the night. And Perunia, you are kind of like, what the heck's going on? And so we go up to the top of the initiative with locks. So did, did I see him start heading towards the door? Yeah, once once I kind of made him visible and he started running, like, yeah, everyone's eyes can kind then, of... Kind then of I tell, I just put my hand out to the little one and just say, I found him. And I, I just start bolting towards uh, where where I saw him. So I want to move as close as I, I can to him. Okay, so one, two, three, four, so two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So you can get to right under the not really there stag head that um, I accidentally must have placed without noticing when I placed the stag head I wanted to place down here. Yeah. Can I? All can right. I see him out the door? Uh. So you, the, as the door is shutting, you can see him. He is making a left out the door. Okay. Uh, then Panama. I want to uh, wait. Oh. Uh, I want to use my my action because that was my movement. So I would like to dash. I figured that you're moving as fast as, as far oh, as so, you could. so that you already counted. So that's dash actually counted. with your dash. Um, cool. If you want, right. if you want, you can um, kind of go halfway, but and then use no, your no, action. No, no, no. That, that's else. that's exactly what I wanted to do. Move as quickly. Okay. Okie doke. All right. Panabon. Ooh. How exciting. Well, <laughs> seeing this commotion and feeling uh, uh, feeling a certain way about commotions, I've noticed there's a side door right there, and um, it might behoove me to get out that side door. Okay. Uh, there's a side door, right? I'm not like... There's uh, side doors on the north and south sides. Okay. Yeah, the, the side door closest right there, I think, is the... Okay, so go ahead and grab your token and kind of move it to, until you've moved about 25 feet. It'll it, So your token won't actually move. It's just going to kind of start drawing a line. And when you get to 25 feet, that's where you'll have to stop. I can't tell what 25 feet is, but... Maybe? Okay. Um, let's see here. Oh, there you go. Uh, five, ten. It didn't give me a number, so. <laughs> yep, I apparently did not turn on that feature. You get to right here, so I'm going to do that right now, so that you okay. can tell me where you want to go. Well, I I know that they've exited the building, and so I feel like the first step is, the first step is exiting the building. Essentially, is what I'm. I want a quick change into my other persona. So I can't do that in the middle of a crowded room. Right. Not and there's not a quick change. Not uh, it takes a little bit of time to change, um, if you will, because you act, you literally have to change uh, clothes. Uh, well, first, let's get out of the building and then see how we feel, because I have to figure out where the version ran off to anyways. Indeed. So you're just going to use the rest of your movement, uh, your turn to get outside. Yes. Okie doke. Shay. Sorry, Shay. So, I, it, I'm sitting here terrified, right? And then Panama gets up and cartwheels over me for something shiny, and then and leaves me with the two giant scary people. And then all of a sudden, one of these giant scary people does like a freaking backflip over the booth and draws like. Something that looks really freaking cool, and if I wasn't terrified, I would ask her about. And then Panabon like runs 
if, uh, all very I, I'm going to take, take that as the cue that this is uh, this is our escape. So I am going to make sure that the lavender dragon, the lavender dragon, can't uh, stop me. So I'm going to misty step. 30 feet away. So let me draw my pointers here. Um, right, so mm -hmm. this is 30 feet. So I'm just going to appear at this table with these nice people. Um, and then I'm going to use my action and my movement to keep going. So uh, that is another... What's my movement? I think it's 25. You can move 50 total with a dash and movement. OK, so let's do my pointers again. I might be drawing all over this. Sorry, not sorry. I, I have my life to run for right now. Uh, I love yeah. how you think you're running from Rosalia and myself. The great no mixed escape. <laughs> yes. I make it all, right, all the way to the other side of the <laughs> Yep. I'll have you stop just a couple of feet before, just because you're kind of having to wind around tables. But yeah, okay. just about there. That's fine. So, no okie doke. Uh, that was Shay. Aegis, um, you, that gnome is, just ran out, and then the other gnome was suddenly closer than they were before, and now is running past you as well. I'm going to use my action to put on all of my gear. So <laughs> the bag, the shield, so action, the bonus action, movement to just like <laughs> yeah. okay, all right. Um, then I'll yeah, then I'll now move towards where Lox is while still like fastening tight straps from my bag and making sure everything is secure. And I'll just right, head on so, out, out past Lox. So or not, that's after Lox. This is where you get, uh, and then it is. Rosalia's turn. Rosalia's turn. That's gonna be my entire life with this game, guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah, nope. <laughs> okay. So uh Rosalia saw that this individual ran out, and now these other folks are kind of chasing that way, but then the little people went that way. Uh the patrons in the tavern are all just kind of doing that number right there. Um, Keej at the bar as as Panabon runs out is just like, oh, bye. Come back again. Um, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Zali is dead set on finding and, and collecting her target. And she put the hex spell on it. She doesn't know if it's still tracing him, if she can follow him. But at this point, she's locked into hunter mode, and she wants to catch that person or that thing and interrogate it. I'm terrified. Okay. <laughs> so your standard movement is going to get you to here. You can take your bonus action to dash to get outside. And then you will see the gentleman. So, do you want to take your bonus action to get outside? Yes, I will take my bonus action. Or not your bonus, not your bonus action, okay. your attack, uh, your action to get outside. All right. So you get your action outside. So you run past locks there, and now you see this individual. Now you don't have any way to attack, but your misty step is a bonus action. So you could bamf in front of him um, if you wanted. I want to bamf in front of him. Okay. <laughs> Bamfing accomplished. Uh, and as you turn, uh, you see the person's eyes just widen. Um, and then he kind of like puts his head down and runs at you and tries to stab you with a sword because if you're just, if you're not just gonna let him go, um, he's gonna try to stick you. Um, I'll wait for the roll. So that is a failed attempt to stick. Uh, this is a natural 20. 
First critical of the game, naturally <gasps> rolled, belongs to the GM, everybody. <laughs> so, <laughs> good thing I look at that. All right, so here we go. The damage is pretty high. Um, all right, so that is nine points of damage, uh, but this is the part that is scary. Really short campaign. Same. Thanks for everything, everybody. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was fun. Thanks for everything, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so immersed. Okay, so um that blade, I mean it 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 cuts along the side of you and it's a it's a good gash, but it's not anything you would be worried about in your experience of fighting unless uh and you can feel the sort of burning sensation that lets you know that there was poison on that blade. Uh and and so there's additional damage that you take from that. Uh you manage to maintain your focus on your hex, though, the entire time. So you do not lose your hex. Uh, Perunia, what is your action? Um, I don't hesitate. When Rosalia starts moving, I start moving. Um, so okay. I'm going to be using all of my action um, and bonus action to get out there. So let's right. see how far it takes me. Oh, so shoot. So you the can pointer. go... So there, I think, is 30. And then one, two, and then basically the other side of the end with your bonus action. So where about Lox is at? About where about uh, Lox is at, and then outside, and then down another one. Yep. OK. And I'll call out to her, Rosalie, I'm coming. All right. So you have exited the doorway. Uh, you see Rosalia in front of this individual. Uh, they're kind of under this awning. And uh, you see that she's kind of just kind of stepped away from him a little bit as uh, as Lachlan makes his move. Yeah. So I see, or I saw her run. Uh, I saw somebody run and then disappear. And then, uh, like, it's out of my sight. So cool. Whatevs. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go out the door, uh, probably to about here. Can I, and can I see him? Is that a direct line of sight? Yes, to... that is a direct line of sight for you. All um... right. So then, I am going to use disarm. Okay. So. Uh... As a gunslinger in this world, uh, this is a custom class. Uh, so what's going to happen is that Locks can do a variety of trick shots. So one of his trick shots is disarm, uh, which grants disadvantage on the attack. However, if successful, it will disarm the opponent. Um, there's also, have you used your bonus action? I have not. So you can always take aim. I will do that as well. So taking me... aim is a bonus action that grants advantage. So between advantage and then like, so taking aim and then using a disarm is just a, a wash on the roll. So. Yep. So yep. there you go. <laughs> effect oh. disadvantage attack, effect advantage attack. Yeah. So with that, wait, wrong one. All right. So I will, I will go ahead and hit the target for you so that you have them targeted. Okie yep. doke. All right. So go ahead and roll to attack. Let's do that. And that's in my actions. Yeah. All right. No. Shh. But everyone in the in the bar hears a giant gunshot go off. Okay. <laughs> um so giant gunshot but you do miss uh it hits the side of the building and um yeah that uh that happened panavon you're outside i am outside i'm in the alley so before anything else can happen 
I either have to scale the building or get further in the alley, and I don't know how tall the building is. So uh, it's um, you know three, two, three stories tall. Okay, I'm just gonna keep moving forward. Then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna move forward and see where that takes me in life. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right there. I still have no arrows, so I still I'm not quite sure how far. Yep, uh, we will fix that. Um, Shay, Loon, what are you doing? Trying to find Panabon. Okay, so as you exit and look both ways, uh, you see Panabon. Uh, and I, it, it, he's trying to climb. They're trying to climb. Yeah, uh, no, they're just running down the. They're just running down the way. Okay. I picked uh, the wrong door. I I take off. I take off after them. All right, you are just behind. Very good, Aegis. You're you're geared up. All right. Get, get, I'll, I'll try to get as close as I can to the gunshot that I heard. All right. One, two, three, four, five. You can actually get, uh, since the door is kind of not latched, you just kind of run into it and you can get to here. Uh, that's your movement. My movement? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, then I will use my action to get in front of locks. Um, okay. And then I, I don't think I, this, this shouldn't take any type of like a bonus action or anything like that, but just grab my shield out and plant it in front of him and uh, interpose myself in between the, uh, him and the guy. You are being cover for locks. Yep. Okay. Uh, oh, I slide into that. <laughs> that <Bounce>. team tactics. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <is> so cute. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. Um, well, with that, we're back around to Rosalia, who uh, just took a nice slice kind of on the side um, and uh, probably looking for some payback at this point. So I am holding my wound, and I'm trying not to think about it. And I really want to get up into this person's face and attack them. So I'm looking at my weapons, and what I want to do is pull out my spear, and I want to run through. Okay. So right now what you have uh, is, is the dagger. So if you want to switch out to a spear, then you would have to actually take, a, take an action to do that. Because um, switching out your weapons uh, for you is always going to take a full action. Um, Okay, then I'll do that. Uh, attack with the dagger or or switch out? With the spear. Switch out with the spear. Okay. Um, so with that, uh, what you kind of see uh, if you're watching, and the guy in front of her definitely sees this, is that Rosalia kind of takes this dagger up and kind of spins it between her fingers. And as she does so, the ends kind of extend until the blade is at the end of a spear. Um, and so now she's wielding a spear. Uh, the gentleman so in front cool. of her does not like that at <laughs> all. Um, so, okay. Uh, are you going to move at all? Now, if you do move, he can make an attack of opportunity against you. Uh, so you can stand your ground or you can try to get out of his way. I'm going to stand my ground. I have a feeling he's a lot stronger than I anticipated but I'm going to make the choice to stand my ground. Okay. So with that, he does try to swing that sword at you again. Um, and that is... Four, that it misses. I rolled a 14. Uh, I didn't have it targeted on you for whatever reason, but the 14 misses your armor class, uh, which I believe is 16. So you did not get hit. Perunya! All right. Um, I think that I've got enough movement here uh, to get up here. I'm trying to see if I can look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six. I, if I've got 30 feet of movement, I think I've got um, enough to, to get up here. You what do. do you think, Danny? All right. Um, if, I've, 
if I'm in five feet of him, I'm going to go ahead and, and take a swipe at this guy. Before you do that, I would yes. like to let you know that there are, it's in front of a tavern right around dinner time in the middle of the city. There are definitely people out here. Mm -hmm. Definitely yep. people out here. And so as a third level fighter, you have your, um, your, uh, what is it? Subclass, your, uh, Martial archetype, and your martial yes. archetype is showboat. Uh, you love an audience, and the third <laughs> level ability that comes with showboat is crowd pleaser. Beginning when you choose this archetype at third level, you gain a bonus one to your attack roll for every non-combatant that can see you and that you can see up to your charisma modifier. Damn. So yes. if there's no one around, if you're like in a dungeon nothing if you're in the middle of this city street uh what's your charisma modifier right now um let's see i believe it is it is plus two so uh you get to add plus two so on your actions Hulk it up. you can see down uh you have your crowd pleaser uh <laughs> ability mm -hmm. which you can do is you just hit that effect twice once for each time you get it yes got it Boom, there you go. So that gives you two plus ones to your attack, which will come through in the in the math. And now you can make that attack. Um, and normally if I'm in a crowd of people, I would have been doing this empty handed as um, a fighting style. But as I've already seen, this guy has his dagger out. I don't have any problem with going to more of a lethal weapon. So I am taking my um, great sword and going to take a stab <laughs> Smite. <laughs> Yes, that's a hit uh yes. so coming up behind him just to kind of describe uh the action here like including the the crowd like what you're doing for the people that are watching because you step outside and you see like there's people there's an audience um so i come out here and i see that we're in um you know a, a very busy thoroughfare um and so you know i had shouted i'm coming rosalia and so i cartwheel over there pull out my sword and swing at this guy like it's a baseball bat okay um crowd pleaser that is a hit so yes. um why don't you go ahead and make that damage test got it All right, that's 11. Uh, pretty good. It, it, you just like cut down a line down his back, uh, and he, he just he kind of cries out in pain a little bit. Um, and is that going to be your turn? Um, yes, it is. Okie doke. We're going to move on then back to the top of the round locks. Yeah, I don't like that this guy did like miss my first shot. And I used a real bullet. Not excited. So I am going to cast Eldritch Blast. All right. So Lachlan is a gunslinger. That is the class. Uh, his archetype is Reaper. Um, this is a sort of, uh, it, it kind of grants warlock abilities to the gunslinger in the same way that uh, Arcane Trickster or Eldritch Knight grant magical abilities to those classes um, and so one of his abilities then is that when he he can use his pistol as a as a focus for his magic so basically he is shooting the eldritch blast from the pistol um, it's mostly just a, a sort of a flavor uh, an aesthetic uh, if you will but he does have it so that and just so we know, that's your revolver damage, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. Your Eldritch Blast is actually going to be down in your spells section. Um, Sorry. So we will we will leave it at that, though, for now. Um, yeah. Uh, I see. I see. All, all right. right. One, two, ten. Yep. And that is your action. There is still a bonus action or a movement, if you like. Uh, no, I, I like it behind the shield. <laughs> Shield wall. All right, Panabon. As you sprint around this corner, one, two, three, four, five, you can get to here with your, just your movement, and now you have your actions and your bonus actions. Um, 
I I'm kind of sad that I I don't know how much Panabon caught of that, but I'm really sad that um, I haven't gotten to stab yet. So I was gonna <laughs> run away, but now I kind of want to kind of want to sneak along the wall and come up and and stab and maybe thieve the guy, <laughs> uh, the unknown human. So I just kind of want to like Pink Panther style, just right up against the wall, casually just walking my way forward. Um, maybe taking out taking out a dagger potentially okay so you have a dagger ready you can move another 25 feet closer that's not going to get you close enough to um to strike from melee uh, however fun thing about daggers it can be thrown you, you picked up what i was what i'm yep, doing there. Yep. <laughs> yeah so let's do that so i'm gonna i'm just gonna do some little dagger damage if i can figure out what i'm doing here um so what's the one that says ammo, I assume? Uh, yes. So the one that says ammo, you're going to double click the box that has the die and the plus five in it. Okay. Let's see what happens. That is a hit. Now, because this guy has uh, allies within five feet, this is going to be a sneak attack. So scroll down to the bottom where it says rogue and your sneak attack is. <laughs> you're going to expand yeah, that down. and then click the effect once you expand it with a micro uh, magnifying glass you're going to click the effect one thank time thank you for knowing that I did that. Uh, effect one time I clicked it I okay don't know now happened. back up oh, to okay. where you rolled to hit with a dagger next to it is 1d4 plus 3 piercing yes you're going to double click that swing um, double click swing all right. Um, as as is the way. So as Rosalia is uh, bringing that spear around, um, the guy kind of just his eyes widen suddenly, and then he just kind of does that that thing you see in the movies where the blood just kind of comes down out of his mouth, and he just kind of kind of falls forward, almost like trying to have Rosalia like catch him as he falls. You know, uh, I don't know if she steps back and lets him just fall in the dirt, or if she catches him. Um, but uh, but he is he is not long for this world. I'll say that. Shay Loon, are you still chasing? Of of course. Um... Okay. <laughs> you turn the corner just in time <laughs> to not see Panavon murder somebody. <laughs> totally didn't do that. Nope. <laughs> just stand here by the body. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, no no see... reason at all for you to think that Panavon had anything to do with that. But I see all the people that were inside, now outside, and yes, this now is true. a dead person, right? There is a dead person. Well, I mean, there's a person on the ground. Am I sleeping? You don't Dying. know. Dying. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm a good girl, so um, I, I use words from old... Um, text that i've been researching um so that nobody in that that knows any known language would understand when i swear so i use the elven word for shit and uh <laughs> um, i um i i i can, can i make it to to panabon uh no uh that is the full 50 feet to get to here Oh, um, mother son of a I don't know if you have another second level spell slot. I I do. Um but I I I don't want to do it yet cuz cuz what if I need to escape in case they threaten me? Um so I'm just going to shout at him. Uh Panabon, let's run. Who's Panabon? I didn't hear you say that. What? 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 <laughs> that was like, what? What? This is fun. <laughs> I put a dagger in the. I have to get my dagger back. I can't just like leave. There's there's a dagger in the version's back. I have to get my dagger back <laughs> and maybe thieve a little bit. Are we in initiative still? Uh, so at this point, no, we are dropping out of initiative. Um. And uh, 
I'm going yeah. to uh, just yell for someone to try to stabilize this guy because well, okay, he so has information this, we need. This were a movie. Um, <laughs> Shay, you said it was an Elvin. Yeah. She says shit in Elvin, and then if it was a movie, it would flash to to Aegis, and he says tip set, which means shit in Daywall, and he walks briskly over to the guy, <laughs> and I cast spare the dying on him. No, you don't. So everybody, uh, real quick, if you're going to say something that is not in the native tongue. Uh, or the trade tongue, uh, especially if it's short like that, uh, go ahead at the bottom of your chat window. You can click in there and find the language that you want to say something in. Um, and you don't have to do this all the time, but it can be a little fun sometimes because if, if you do it and then you type whatever you want to say in and hit enter, uh, <laughs> the people who can understand will see what you said. Everyone else will get gobbledygook. And our audience will see what you said without, uh, without the other players kind of knowing. So that is a that is a tool that we have available. I don't know what all of these languages are. So uh, Crown uh, is the so on your character sheet. If you uh, click on your character sheet under your abilities, yeah. at the bottom, that's where all your languages are. So Crown is the uh, oh you don't that's the one you don't speak. It's something I took with my my class that was available when I built on D and D Beyond. It didn't get imported. Okay. Because you have like five languages here. I'm really um, smart. <laughs> we'll look at that for now. We'll say we'll say room. we'll say okay uh, that you did yell that, um, okay. and we'll figure out what what happened. Um, I like that, that Shailun so, is a, a a language on my sheet. <laughs> Shailun is a language on your sheet, so that we can click Shailun, and you can send messages to me, and I can send messages oh, to you, cool. and the audience can see those messages. Neato. Okay. Cool. Yep. All right. Um, yeah, I walk up and uh, put my hand on him. I say, no, you don't. And I grasp my holy symbol and I cast spare the dying so he doesn't die. Oh. Uh, so, yeah. Explain exactly. So, spare the dying is a spell that has what components? Uh, it's verbal not a revive. Somatic. Yeah, it's verbal and somatic. So that means you have to do something with your hands, and you have to say some things. Uh, and now, given that this world magic is not something that everyone knows about, uh, especially when it's something like that, there's not necessarily a visual component of the spell itself. Uh, if you can kind of describe what it is you do, because it's weird. Like, well, so yeah, weird. so I'm grasping my my holy symbol. Um, my relationship with my God, I'm, I'm not a very flowery per person, so it's, it's very honest. So, um, after you hear me say, no, you don't to the guy, um, uh, I'll say, Nipoe, we need him. And that's, and a glow will come out of my hand and, uh, spare the dying. And then he stops bleeding as the dagger is like, the dagger's like almost ejected from his body, just kind of, it doesn't like fly out, it just kind of pops and then like lays down on his back where he's laying, uh, and the bleeding stops. Um, uh, hey, my dagger! Yay! Shay's eye, she, Shay just stops running, and like her eyes get wide and her jaw drops, she goes, how did you do that? I just turn to locks. <laughs> oh, Almost, almost very blatantly ignoring you, um, Lox. We must question him. I agree. Uh, and I turn, I turn to her as, as she's looking wide-eyed, and I, I, I say, um, "Y'all didn't notice it, but this guy here has been watching y'all all night. For some uh, reason, he had some business." Perunia's gonna pick him up. Um, and carry him out of the crowd so we can get some privacy. Uh, yeah, there's, there's been a few yells and shouts uh, as things were kind of happening. Uh, where are you trying to take this person? <laughs> the alley that, um, that Panabon and Shay ran down looked pretty deserted, so I'm going to um, go that way. Okay, uh, so it looks like the large dragonborn is is going to uh, pick up this sack of potatoes and haul them down towards the back of this building. Uh, uh, if anyone is not following, let us know. 
I'm actually going to, I would like to stay behind and create a distraction so that Perunia can do whatever they're doing. Um, Because as much as I want to thieve, I know how to draw a crowd, and so I can make the crowd entertain. And this might be a chance to do some nice busking for the crowd that is gathered. So, yeah. Okay. Um, It's all part of the show. All part of the show, ladies and gentlemen. All all part part of the show. show. (laughs) Um, Is anyone else staying up front? No, I'm, I'm following the Dragonborn. Okay. Uh, so with that, we are, we're, we're out of, so we're out of the, the combat, we're out of the map, uh, and we are, um, yeah, everyone has kind of walked to the back. Uh, Perunia sets the fella down uh, in the alleyway between the drunken octopus and whatever building it is that's on the other side. Um, and I'm going to um, take my bag off my back and start working on him. Uh trying to like bandage him up and, and get him get him back uh conscious. Okay, I'm gonna tie so his hands. That is what your healing kit, right? Uh yeah, medicine I would imagine. Or uh what is it? So all right. So medicine, you have to roll a ten or better to stabilize someone, uh right? Uh healing kit allows you to stabilize them automatically without having to roll. And then in your case, because you have the feet healer, uh when you use it on a creature that is not dying, you can actually restore 1d6 plus 4 hit points, uh, plus additional hit points equal to their maximum hit dice. So, um, but only once can you do this to any person between rests. So I don't know if I want to get him that healthy, though. I just want to get him up one point. What could I do to do that? <laughs> I just want to get him conscious. I don't want, to, I don't want him to get strong again. And he's already stable, uh, right? He, the dying. Healing, healing word. Yeah. One d four. All right. Fine. Um, <laughs> By the way, um, I'm like staying back because I'm afraid, but I'm peeking through Lox's legs to try to like see if more magic happens. Oh, and it's about it to is happening. <laughs> right uh, so, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's grab Aegis here, and then let's target our guy and uh yeah why don't you go ahead and tell us how this looks when you cast it now healing word is a quicker spell than like you know others because it's like it's supposed to be kind of quick on the fly uh but it does have a verbal component i can just i can just hit the uh, the heal button right the, yes. that cross. Uh, because because he's targeted you can hit the cross uh to do the effect uh, and then let us know how that happens so i um I once what again is your grab... healing word? <laughs> I... I don't think hmm. about that. Um, <laughs> for for now, until it? until I get that, um, I I'll just uh, grasp grasp my um, my holy symbol again. Well, actually, it's beads around my around my my wrist. So I grab a hold of my holy symbol and um, I say, kind of under my breath, um, "He does not deserve your mercy, Nipoe, but please bring him to consciousness." And then a glow happens again. And um, yes. how many points was that? Two? Uh, you rolled it to five. Five. So he is up five. He is no longer unconscious. He kind of wakes up. He's like, oh, what the hell? Um, no sword. Gonna... And everyone's standing over him. Uh, I'm actually going to bend down and get right into his face. And I would like to roll an intimidation on him and say, why? Were you following us? And okay. I just rolled. You are intimidating. <laughs> I agree. He just kind of <laughs> leans back and then he just and spits blood in your face. I slap him in the face. Okay, slapping him in the face. Uh, are you? I am you rolling unarmed him. combat. Yeah. I'm... Okay. I'm slapping him. I, I don't take that well. I just don't. That's a hit for uh, four bludgeoning damage, which he has five, <laughs> so it doesn't. Perfect. Perfect. Sorry, new friend. That's what we were going for. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Well, he was going to live, yeah, but never go. was getting involved. So. Yes. 
Okay, so uh, he just kind of like his head cracks to the side uh, and, and actually hits the wall behind him and he just kind of looks back up at you. You'll get so I'm going to grab him again and say, well, you can get something out of you or we can check your pockets after you're dead. What's it going to be? After he's dead. After he's dead. After he's dead. <laughs> pockets. <laughs> Um, at, at this point, I'm going to turn and look at the group like, anybody else want to try? Kind of look. I just look and Panabon, I motion to his pocket so you can start now. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. I, yeah, mean, I, say, uh, I say we search him. I, 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 I want to tie him up and, and search him. <laughs> Beside everyone, this is my time to shine. <laughs> Um, should I, would you like me to roll a sleight of hand? I'm ever so good at sleight of hand. Uh, yes, you can make a sleight of hand check. You don't have to, though, because you're not trying to do it sneakily. You can make oh, a an investigate roll as well. So, which, whichever. Um, I get more out of sleight of hand, um, unless I could somehow finagle... By uh, my special gift for earlier, and instead of having it be a wallet, it's just whatever the person is carrying. Yeah, I mean, you can you can grab whatever uh, they have. Yeah. I, I I forgot what I'm doing. I guess I'll just use sleight of hand. Okay. I've forgotten everything in the bargaining process. All right. So you actually, this fellow doesn't have anything on them except for like a small pouch of coins maybe three or four copper pieces like enough to buy a drink at the tavern really um but nothing any else tattoos? and any tattoos what? or anything like that um well not with slate of hand uh but he does look at you uh as as you're as you're kind of going through his pockets and he looks down and then he just says uh he kind of smiles and grins one of his teeth is missing from Perunia's slap uh, because she slaps like that guy on YouTube when they're having that slap contest. <laughs> you, y'all know what I I'm do. talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah, the um, he just kind of grins and then he says something. It's like this sort of uh, uh, like a like a strange patois, but he also like does a thing with his hands. And as far as anyone else can tell it's gibberish um but panabon uh panabon gets that message loud and clear which is do i you do totally should have gagged him damn it i kept saying i was tying up his hands so was he able to do those hand sim- symbols uh i mean i didn't hear that is it okay okay i mean if it's important to you we'll, we'll nah, get not, not really but... All right. Okay, well, um, when you say something like that to me, all I can do in response is to pick up the dagger that was cur- that was in your back and shove it in your face. So I would like to shove my dagger in their face. Or go ahead, with advantage, because he's not going anywhere. That's fair. Um, so sorry, everyone, I'm just, uh... No, he's... he's... It's, it's murder. Oh, no! <laughs> it's murder. <laughs> um... <laughs> uh, I will cast, I will cast oh. command, and I'll on Panabon and say stop. Okay, so I'm very. Let's fast. see, uh, because it's a spell. <laughs> you, you, you don't, you don't necessarily know what's happening. Right. So what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna have you, Panabon, uh, just make an initiative roll real quick. Oh, I can do that. Uh, it's not a high initiative. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's there's a chance. So, Aegis, make a dexterity saving throw. Dexterity saving throw. I don't think I'm good at. Oh, not too bad. Can we at least mm-hmm. slice their nose off? <laughs> Do they need their nose? Maybe. Um, Aegis, you are targeting Panabon now. 
Go so, ahead so I... and make cast the spell. Okay. So the spell is coded, right? So you should be able to. Um, I mean, all it is is a wisdom DC, but uh, you should be able to hit that save button, and it should pop up automatically for Panabond. He's already targeted, or I have to click him first. He's targeted already. Or, or they're them targeted first. already. Yeah. They. Okay. Uh, and then save. Okay. Nice. Um. So that is a fail. So yeah, Panamon, as you're about to like stick the dagger in this fellow's face, um, Aegis yells something, and you find yourself unable to follow through with this dagger stab. Um. Um. Stabbing. Why am I? Why am I not stabbing? Oh, what's, what's happening? What's going on? Why is there no stabbing happening? There's no Your stab is what's broken. Happening? Can I at least cut out the tongue? What's happening? Why, why am I not stabbing? So, as as Panabon is there, like saying these things, it, it Panabon, stop! Creepy. We've talked about murder. No, not allowed. Well, but 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 I already stabbed once. I just. One more stab. One little stab. Tiny you stab. It's, it's once. Right, right. Yes, but once is it's like it's like potato chips, you know? You can't just stab once. I told that you we can't do that. We're try <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna get arrested I, my bird. and then we're gonna go to prison and then our tourist is gonna find us and then and then we're gonna get killed by monsters that can take their hands off and have long tongues and I'm I, like oh. we're, we're, oh, wait. everything's ruined. We have to leave oh. again. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. L -l -l little oh. people. Yep. Calm, just calm have down. hands. Wait, does he have hands? Does he have a tongue? Does, is his tongue regular? Someone check the tongue. <laughs> how, 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 is there a normal tongue in this his person's His tongue mouth? does not seem abnormally long, and his hands, as far as you can tell, are on his wrist. And if you tug at them, they do not appear to easily come off. Oh, uh, so I can't stab him again, because he's got regular hands and a regular tongue. <sighs> Fine. Did say my I head, my, dad my head is rocking. <laughs> Mr. Lox, question him. Yes. Okay. <laughs> let's get Panabon. Yes. I look over at Panabon, or who I've been hearing them say Hello. Panabon up to, and I go, bejeweled little person. I've got, okay. what did he say to you before you started trying to end it? Oh, just the normal thing that we're all dead and that we should do whatever we want with them. And I was going to, like, slice him in the face for that, because where do you go with conversation after that? But you know what? Apparently, I don't get to stab anyone today. So... Look, I'll tell you where you go. we go with that. I'll tell you where we go with that. We should let him go. And I look at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> we should do the what now? We should let him go. We Too we are not murderers. We are not murderers. We should let him go. I and then I look, I look at Aegis <laughs> and are I give him a, 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 a like very like sly grin, which is not subtle at all. <laughs> um, can I roll an uh, insight to see if I understand the signal? <laughs> sure. Just because I want a failure. It would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> I say we'll say it's a 10. Oop. No, I'm too insightful. <laughs> he understands. I have a plan. <laughs> Good uh, idea. Prunia looks at these these two newcomers who have been helping us, and I'm like, um, like not wanting to murder this guy either. But as I just like hit him and he almost died, I kind of want him to die at this point. But we are not murderers, um, Rosalie and myself, except when we need to be. Why so does I'm gonna keep saying they're not murderers. Not to Rosalie, I'm like, nice yeah, we're gonna let this happen. Um, and we're gonna catch him if we can. And we, um, I will step back and, and motion to Rosalia to do the same. All right, I look him in the eye and I go, You got lucky today, skid out of. <laughs> As everyone kind of backs off, just looks, gets up. Bends down, picks something up from the ground, something small, 
a little yellowish, uh, and then just kind of turns and uh, walks. Uh, you see him kind of going like this as oh. he walks. And, uh, <laughs> did, I, did I see that happen? A little yellowish thing? Did I, did I see that? Yeah, you, you saw the, the, the he picked it up, uh, just a little yellowish thing. If you want to make a perception test to see what it was, uh, if you don't know, uh, I was actually going to try to slide of hand to steal it. I would. Him. I would like to uh, uh, perception it's that in his hand, and then it's in his mouth. But, I would like to. Yeah. Um, so that would be a very difficult uh, slide of hand. Uh, I would like to possible. perception that. I mean, I have a plus go ahead. Seven. Dexterity. You have a plus seven. Um, it's it's it was probably a tooth. I'm yeah, sure it was a tooth. Yeah. You know. Oh, it's a tooth. Oh, I yeah. don't want a tooth. I can't do anything with a tooth. Never mind. Oh, yeah. All right. something cool is is he getting right up to like leave yeah no he starts he's just walking away like and so like, i say nothing. you guys we trail him that sound that sounds dangerous he can was i going can to i stab us. him after or you guys only because you didn't say and i'm feeling goofy right now uh he kind of stops and turns i can hear you <laughs> I want to stab you in the face. Oh, and then he turns and just like <laughs> crosses, goes around the corner and just starts. And he's now he's out of earshot. Got it. <laughs> well, I tried. <laughs> I thought you were quiet. So we're gonna. We're, we're still gonna follow him, right? Like I feel like I've been told I'm got a death sentence on my head. That's like twice in one lifetime, and I'm not feeling it. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna trail him. So yeah, <laughs> it's it's actually reverse psychology, Danny. We were telling him that we were going to trail him so that he thinks that we would give up. Lox is a genius. Sure. No, it's not reverse psychology. I'm just I'm just I'm just gonna go for it. Why not? I like right uh, now. What said. Right now, real quick. Uh, so Sarah's not <laughs> saying anything. But I have gotten like a ream full of data from Shailene just watching Sarah's face the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, she is communicating. I can't, I can't see so, <laughs> all right. Uh, 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 go do, ahead. Do you, Do you think Panabon? Do you think uh, uh, he's he's sent from our tourists? And 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 uh. Uh, the 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 high priest. I mean, he had regular hands and a regular tongue, so probably not. But if but maybe I... they're just looking for us. Maybe maybe he's gonna tell them where we are. Our tourists? No, we just dropped some guy named Arturus uh, off at uh, in the tempest. Well, we what? used to be the tempest. I'm uh, so sorry. Um. I, I describe him. Um, I, I can't remember what he looks like physically, but I give you a, a vague physical description and then go, and he's he's kind of an asshole. Does he have a large dragonborn that travels with him? Uh, uh, not that I remember. No, well, I mean, we took someone by that name and kind of description um out oh a couple months ago maybe only a couple weeks ago it gets a little fuzzy but um yeah we dropped him down at the new continent that was unveiled when the tempest lifted oh it's true I, I, i'm gonna need more information i um, did, did um did he have any weaponry on him because i just came in halfway through the halfway through the battle uh did was he carrying anything weapon-like, or was it all all with his hands? He had a sword, a short Panabon, sword, not quite a long sword. Can, can we please focus on the things that are important, like not getting killed, and where who this guy's from, and who he who sent him, and and not the shiny objects, basically. I, I agree with the it's smart little. This one. is an important. This is an important shiny object. It's because that's. Kind of a hallmark of a thief in some in some guilds. Um, I'm not sure saying the I remember... hallmark of a thief is not shouting that you're a thief every chance you get. 
I mean, that's the hallmark of some thieves. I'm, you know, I'm a little different than other people. Um, I'm, I'm just saying, not carrying a lot and having just a sword and some coins, kind of potentially, maybe, there's some thieving things happening that are not my fault. Mr. Dossett, we should make yeah. our way. We're I wasting think... time here. No, I, I I don't think it's a waste of time. We we were we came here following the sign, and we found these folk. Oh. Someone was about to kill this guy, and threatened to do it again. Something tells me we need to stick with these people. Well, you're welcome we to join us. There's join you where? Well, we haven't quite decided where yet, but Rosalia and I were in Merikadaska looking up for our next job. We hire out our services as bodyguards, that kind of thing. And um, mm. yeah, we had just guy. invited uh, Panabon uh, and his companion to join us. And based on your actions today, I definitely say both of you are people Rosalia and I would like to well, have around. Danny, Wait. can I look around for a sign? Like, um, yeah, you can. Uh, just a perception test. Um, as no. you, you as would... you check, I say, I have treated many people with head problems, and I don't believe that staying with these people would be good for our health. Okay. I look affronted. <laughs> what? Don't don't worry. That's that's just how he talks. You'll get used to it. You, ah. you you guys, you two were trying to protect us. Yeah. I mean, obviously, but little one. We well, saw the guy watching your table the whole night. Well, since we walked in. Uh, that, my name's Lockley. It's nice to meet you. I, I look at Panabon to see if, if like I should trust these people and then realize that I'm looking to Panabon to see if I should trust these people. <laughs> so I, I like Shay kind of like steals herself and like because she's got to make this decision. So um, <laughs> I, I, I reach out and, and give him my hand. It's a little I, hand. Thank yeah. you. <clears throat> I really no. would like to not tie. I'll do what I can, the old lady. <laughs> and with that, we end our first session, Ooh. like clockwork. Um, it has been a eventful day in Marikodashita, and we have accomplished what we needed to accomplish this session, which is to get our group together and a little invested in each other, maybe. So maybe. <laughs> I like these people. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thanks everybody for tuning in and watching um, all of the stuff that's going on. Uh, the these maps, the 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 tokens. Oh, um, oh my goodness. Let me uh, if we have the if we can get the map up real quick, Tom. Uh, Tom is our tech, and he or wait, is Thomas doing our tech or is Tom doing our tech? Tom is. Tom is. That's right. All right. I just got to watch the credits again. So it's Tom doing our tech and uh, thanks so much because he uh, it just doesn't happen without him. He's our um, unofficial um, eighth player. Yes. Um, <laughs> or more official. Official eighth player. So this is uh, I've just blew up Panabon's uh, token here uh so not the not the outline i, I grabbed that from someplace uh, where i could license silly outlines uh but the token itself this is not even the complete token this is a a color a flat color draft of the token um next week we'll have the the, the finalized tokens um these tokens are done by uh, a fellow bernardo hasselman who creates tokens for like d roll 20 and stuff like that um they're beautiful tokens uh, for for VTTs for Roll Twenty for for Fantasy Grounds, 
Uh, so these are the kinds of, we're going to be including all the tokens from our games. We're going to be including the battle maps. Uh, we're going to uh, be writing up all of the, the classes and subclasses and everything. Um, under the open source gaming license, uh, we can make stuff that is D and D, uh, but there's a lot of stuff we can't use outright from uh, from them and put into uh, publication, right? So, so if we want to have a certain specific flavor to the world, we've got to create that ourselves. And so, all of that we want to make available to uh, to everybody as we're kind of moving through this and going along. Um, and the the first big release is going to kind of be packed up with that Kickstarter. So, um, yeah, it's. Uh, Real exciting. I'm looking forward to it. And um, I hope everyone had a good time. Uh, we also, at the opening credits, uh, there were um, the illustrations of our characters. Uh, that's going to happen every every time. So if you missed it this time, I don't know if that's going to be in the end credits. We'll find out. But those were done by uh, Ron Phillips, uh, otherwise known as Decaf Pillow. Uh, Thank you. Very amazing, uh, amazingly done. Uh, the The cost is is very reasonable for the the level of artwork and the responsiveness to um to the the client's needs um and uh, i mean i love them uh, i love every piece of art that we've got and yeah uh you haven't seen the map yet eventually we'll get the map up here uh we've got a fellow for that and uh do i have any other shout outs today Shout outs think, to you and the audience and shout outs to the players. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I gotta I gotta say too, like the, the amount of work and creativity that's gone into this with all the artists, the entire world. Danny got a cartographer like for the world of this that you'll get to see when the Kickstarter's launched and stuff like that. It's just um a whole a whole thought through world and all that content is gonna be available um through the Kickstarter. So please uh, we'll drop in the link to the mailing list again. Please sign up so that you get the notifications about it. Um, and we're going to have uh, about three or four more episodes before the Kickstarter launches. So join us here every uh, Sunday from 7 to 10 Central. And we'll be back and see what happens with these characters that I'm already in love with. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, audience, thanks so much for joining us. And with that, we are going to cue credits. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks.